This is going to be 100 minutes with our friend Johannan Afek. Therefore, it's going to be a fantastic meeting, especially as we do not know about one particular chess world. And we'll figure out in a moment how it works and why it is interesting to know about it more and more. You will see why, guys, in a moment. You will see why in a moment. The actual magazine. And we have the 60 seconds with Johanna Afek. What about that? This is the link that I'll put in the chat in a moment. And this is the free PDF sample. You can just download for free and read the interview with our friend Johanan Afek. What about that? Do you like this gift? And in a moment we'll be joining our friend Johanan Afek in one minute and we'll be having 60 minutes to ask him about some of the part of the invisible world we do not have the access. And this is the introduction into chess beauty. <coughs> I did it on purpose. The introduction about chess beauty. This is the interview with our friend Johanan Afek. And this is the magazine that you can download for free. The sample. And we are joining our friend. And very briefly about the books by our offer. This is the book by Emmanuel Neiman and Emmanuel Neiman was the co-author about the book Invisible Chess Moves written by our friend Johannan Afek. At the same time there is another one Practical Chess Beauty I show you many many times by Johannan Afek published by Quality Chess and one more The Real Chess Couple in Action by Hans Bem and Johanan Afek by Thinkers Publishing. Thinkers Publishing, therefore, all of these books will be briefly discussing. And if you have any questions about chess compositions, chess art, chess beauty, feel free to tell us, okay? And now I am just disappearing <coughs> from this part, being in a moment with our guest. Just give me a second. We have our guest, special guest, Johanan Afek, and in a moment we'll be having the interview with our guest and with the examples prepared by our friend as well. Therefore, feel free to ask the questions into the channel. And we, we are just starting right now. Hello, my friend Johanan. How are you? <clears throat> Hello. Good evening. I'm fine. Thanks. And you? I am very good. I am pretty happy and very excited because I wanted to have you in our community to share your love <coughs> sorry, about chess composition, about chess art and chess beauty. And it looks like that finally we have the chance. Indeed we have, yeah. Yeah, it would be great. And in the meantime, guys, I will be sharing the links to uh, all of the parts about uh, our friend's uh, uh, books that he published, especially, especially the books that are available on the market, because in a moment <clears throat> we'll be talking about the number of books our guest has written already. And it looks like that not all of them are available, but at least the ones that probably will be the most interested uh, with would be the easiest to buy if you wish. And now we are just starting with our friend Johanna Afek. I'll just, just make a short introduction. Our friend Johanna Afek was born in 1952 in Tel Aviv and is, he is an Israeli chess player, composer, trainer and arbiter. He is the only person that possesses international titles at five different facets of chess. International Master, International Grand Master of Chess Composition, International Arbiter, FIDE Master in Problem Solving and International Judge for Chess Composition. How did you get that many titles, my friend? Um, hard work in, uh, in principle, but I've been doing <clears throat> all these activities parallel, like playing chess tournaments since I was 15, I guess, and uh, or even earlier. And 
Um, at the same time, publishing my uh, first problem, made problem, and first endgame study. And that was also when I was 15. I can remember the magazine, the Israeli magazine, that uh, was very kind to publish my stuff. And uh, in the last 55 years, I'm doing it uh, parallelly, non-stop, actually. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah? yeah. No, that I mean, uh, there are no secrets. It's hard work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard work pays off, right? Pays off, yeah. And if you can tell us a little bit uh, what uh, kind of activities were the most difficult to reach that specific title. I mean, how much you needed to invest the energy, work, maybe coaches to get into the level of the uh, titles you achieved. F from your perspective, of course. Um, the thing is that I, in the uh, first phase of my chess career, I was uh, not looking for titles. I was uh, in chess, I, was, I just like to play chess uh, and I like to play tournaments, but it, these were not only my, uh, um, my chess uh, uh, aspects. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually making my main living of organizing chess tournaments and uh, being a chess arbiter and uh, writing chess columns in the daily newspapers in uh, Israel and articles for European uh, magazines and stuff. This uh, was uh, almost uh, when I got, when I was, uh, uh, I, uh, let's say, uh, 30 or 30, uh, even 40. And only then I became a, ch a professional player. So I actually did my international master title only when I was 39 or 40. And, uh, yeah, I was also chess teacher and chess trainers in uh, dozens of schools in Tel Aviv and also of uh, gifted uh, people in general that were uh, juniors that wanted to study chess too. And uh, yeah, I was uh, even a director of ch a chess club, a full-time job for six years in the municipality of Tel Aviv and, and m many other things and uh, really working on my chess uh, career started much later so uh, it's very difficult to say what was devoted for this part and aspects of chess and and how much effort i did to get the title when in uh, the secret is that you get the title when you deserve it mm -hmm. not earlier than that yes. yes of course this is the pretty much uh, truth that not that many players may understand but after they just get into that chest a little bit deeper they see that it's not that easy to reach the titles right yeah i can add uh, also that in a later stage i played in uh, 2002 when i was already 50 i made my best tournament ever and i uh, playing the paris open championship where i made my only playing Grandmaster Norm. I won the tournament ahead of uh, all the Grandmasters there, but I didn't uh, try on to become a Grandmaster also in uh, over the board chess, mainly because I was uh, happy and satisfied with my IM title. And, uh, and I have won uh, Norm as a souvenir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And now we'll be talking a little bit about your publications, just briefly, because of course uh, we do not have that much time, but just briefly about your publications, especially the books. What made you to write the books about chess, chess composition, chess art and chess beauty? What was the main drive for you? Just publish this into the books, not just having it for yourself. Yeah, first of all, I started to write my books only when I, uh, in this millennium, in the previous millennium, I did only write uh, chess columns and articles and stuff, a lot of them. But books I started, uh, maybe I would mention that I moved uh, late in life. I moved from Tel Aviv to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. and only in Europe, I started to write books. And uh, uh, the first book, I, I was really motivated to write because it was about my chess teacher, my uh, my chess teacher in my youth, and the one who inspired me most 
to compose was Moshe Cherniak, mm -hmm. the international master who was also three times Israel champion and 40 years member of the Olympic team and was well known uh, over the world. He played many world champions and uh, he played everywhere and uh, he was known for his books also. Maybe that he wrote books also inspired me. Sometimes I helped him to write his books too and uh, at a certain moment, I decided that maybe I would share with others my uh, passion uh, in chess co for chess composition and also for my uh, other chess uh, activities. And that was the main motivation. Another motivation is that you also want to make living as a writer at some point and uh, the, uh, writing books was part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And I am very impressed because you have just uh, shared that much passion about your, uh, let's say, ideas and all of the, uh, let's say, positions you created, that it is visible from the aspect that you are writing about it and presenting this, that this is your entire chess life, if I can say that. Is it true that uh, devoting 50 years for chess composition, chess art, chess beauty, can make you happy, as the Taresh mentioned, just like music and uh, love can make uh, people happy? Can we make some comparison? Yeah, in the questionnaire in the chessbase.com, uh, they asked me if chess can make people happy, and I answered that it can make people happy as all other fine arts. Uh huh. Yeah, yes. they make people as um, music and literature and uh, uh, cinema and uh, paintings and also chess and chess composition, which is. Uh, certainly an art uh, if you get into it uh, deep enough mm -hmm. okay excellent i'm super happy about it by the way guys i'll be posting the links to uh, some specific specific aspects that we are talking about at this moment we have the 60 seconds with johanan afek uh, on the chess website and in a moment i'll just give you another link because you can just download the sample of the magazine that i want to share uh, want to share it with you and you can just read the full uh, interview with our friend Johanna Afek at this magazine and another stuff that we presented for we want to present for today would be the selected positions that we'll just want to share and just make a little bit of introduction into just just composition world but before that we just share the screen and show this to our audience I just want to ask you a simple question there are three names that are in the chess world especially with the word that is invisible to us. First is chess composition, second chess etudes, and third is chess studies. Can you tell us a little bit what is the difference between these three terms? First of all, you mentioned only two because etude and studies is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Etude is the French name and study is the English name of the... And it is not only for chess, it's for studies in general, yes? And uh, But uh, etude, etudie is uh, the French word. And uh, and what was the and third one? Composition, studies and etudes. Uh, studies, yeah. etudes are the same. Okay. And what about the studies and composition? What is be yeah. the difference between these two? Okay. Ch chess composition is the art of composing artificial uh, positions, which uh, has chess ideas in the purest way, in the most artistic way. It is a, a, an art that developed at the same time as chess playing developed, but in a different direction. And uh, most of the chess composers, they used to play chess in the beginning, and then they were attracted uh, to uh, other, uh, the other uh, aspect of chess, which is the chess composition. Uh, but uh, there were also many who did it uh, at the same time, both. Not only me, but also my friend from my Dutch team, Jan Tiemann. He had a, he's a famous grandmaster who was number two in the in the West. Yeah, he was number one in the West, but number two in the world mm -hmm. at the time of Karpov and uh, later uh, Kasparov. And uh, he uh, he is also a keen chess composer all his life and he's uh, even now he's my age more or less and he's improving all the time as a composer and he, le he plays less tournaments and mo composing more but there were other world champions like uh, Botvinnik he used to compose uh, also uh, studies the most famous composer among the greats was 
Paul Keres, mm -hmm. who in his younger years was a very good composer. And But uh, you asked me about the difference between the two uh, things. So chess composition is an art, but this art has all kinds of genres. There are the problems, the mate problems, mate in two, mate in three moves, mate in more moves. They are called more movers. There are also self-mates and helpmates and all kinds and fairy chess, all kinds of uh, genres of chess composition. Endgame studies is one of the main genres, which is the most connected with the over the board chess. Okay, and the, yeah. the, the most connected to the over the board chess, how yes. much they are just, uh, let's say, resemble the actual position the, on the board? So I'm like, how much practical are they? How much practical they are? Yes, I mean. for example, if the person is just getting into this type of composition, how much he or she can get in the, let's say, understanding of chess in a practical meaning over the board playing? Yes, it's about really concrete things, real concrete things. Uh, chess chess uh, endgame studies, not the other genres, I'm talking about endgame studies, they can help the chess player in m many ways. They are recommended by the best trainers in the world, like Mark Dvoretsky, he used to teach endgame studies as a regular part of his work to all his pupils, and he had a big uh, he called it cartotech in Russian, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you understand. Yes, yeah, so, set of uh, examples. Mm -hmm. Yes, in a, yeah, but not on computer, but he had the real cards. Yes, it was the paperwork. Yeah, exactly, because he's also the old generation uh, and was, sorry, he passed away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, uh, he used endgame studies uh, on regular basis. He loved endgame studies and all his jubilee birthdays he uh, was sponsoring a composing tourney to celebrate his uh, 60th birthday 50th birthday and after his passed away uh, we also organized a composing tourney in his memory but i i come back to what are the benefits from endgame studies like first of all by solving endgame studies you improve First and foremost, your calculation skills. Mm -hmm. Second, I, I just do headline, add the lines for it. Uh, no, I cannot get deeper, but yeah. um, you can, you also uh, enrich your defensive and attacking uh, tactical weaponry. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. If you solve endgame studies, uh, many of them, you uh, uh, develop also your out of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. Jakob your... Ogart mentioned in his book thinking outside the box, right? Yes. This is the concept probably. Yes, he also talked about inside the box. Uh -huh. also, yes, and uh, uh, Jakob Ogart is another example of a player who uh, uh, composes endgame studies from practical positions. And he has uh, quite a few of them. Uh, what you can also uh, get, uh, uh, how do you improve your tactics and uh, chess uh, uh, calcula calculation by pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. If you solve so many studies and you remember the motives, then when the time comes and you have to solve a big problem when when the position uh, the position is ruined and you can you still get a, make a street fighting there you can use many many uh, motives from uh, endgame studies that uh, can really get the opponent crazy because he was not expecting it like big surprises and 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 if you have them if you saw them you have many in your chess knowledge that you you store forever actually yeah, but by way of pattern recognition, yeah? Suddenly you say, this resembles something I already saw mm -hmm. during the game. And then you you use it if you are lucky and successful. And I, I say it also from my own experience. Mm -hmm. From my own experience, it was uh, two ways. Or I used well-known uh, 
uh, motives and uh, weapons in my own games and also I took ideas from games to compose new studies because they sometimes they happen or they uh, trigger some new ideas for composing new end game studies and there are special tournaments to, uh, they are called tourneys in chess composition that are uh, specifically they want uh, they want uh, uh, ideas that were derived from real games i can give you the the best example is the global chess day of judith polgar mm -hmm. one of the events of this global chess that she makes every year in budapest and all over the world yeah. uh, is a composing tourney for uh, ideas taken from um, from uh, real games, games right over the board games mm -hmm. and she dedicates every year this tourney to her great teacher who was a great player Paul Benko mm -hmm. who was also a great composer of problems and end game studies and every year she I, I take part in, in honor of, of uh, Paul Benko also in this but she and that's the interviews you once saw also she interviewed uh, us about what we did for this specific uh, tourney, uh, tourney of composing in the memory of Paul Benko. Mm -hmm. Excellent introduction, really grateful for this one. And one question from our chat from one of our friends of our community is the simple one, but it must be addressed as well. What is the difference between the study and a puzzle? How could you... Uh, Puzzle is a word I don't like. Mm -hmm. Puzzle is, is any puzzle in uh, in the world that you know. This is puzzle, but endgame study is more specific for for these puzzles about uh, positions of why to play and win, why to play and draw. They are called puzzles like any other puzzle, but uh, puzzle is not a professional chess word. It's just a, a word of a kind of amateurish word. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. And now let's get into the positions because uh, our guest prepared the positions. And if you can share these positions onto the screen. Sure, just a moment. Okay, no problem. And guys, guys if you have any questions related to our guest uh, domain about the composition, all of the stuff, just let me know. I'll try to put them. And in the moment, I'll be just addressing other questions and the books as well. And now we have the first, uh, let's say, um, study, first position. And if you can give us a little bit of insight, what is this study all about? What is the solution? And why this is the beautiful one, even with the minimal number of pieces? Please continue. So, first of all, I, we would, I would like to thank the patient uh, viewers for uh, the waiting patiently. And uh, so they deserve our uh, praise. And uh, we are looking now at the, at, the, at the first position. I just want to mention a couple of uh, terms around this study. This study is actually a miniature. Miniature is a study up to seven pieces, which has a, a, a special charm. And uh, uh, if it has, uh, every study has uh, the structure, the position, and also a solution. The solution must be only one solution and only one move at a time and, uh, and no other. If there are other moves instead that the composer did not intend to include, they are kind of uh, defects in the study and they disqualify the study often and uh, they are called cooks mm -hmm. the study because, is cooked right yeah also in chess problems if there are solutions which were not meant by the composer on the board they are, they are called cooked and the study is usually disqualified disqualified unless the composer managed to correct it and mm -hmm. make, make it work this study is especially nice because of two aesthetic um, uh, uh, view, uh, aspects of the, of the structure of this position. This position is not only a miniature, is even a special, because it has only five pieces, it is called baby, a baby study, mm -hmm. because it's so economical. And economy is very important in arts, mm -hmm. in all arts, 
and especially in the art of uh, end game studies and end game and uh, uh, chess problems because it means that you show the most uh, uh, your ideas in the most economical way mm -hmm. and just yeah. briefly because our audience are not that much professional if i can say that how can we explain that the simplest way what does it mean econ economical in a, from chess perspective what does it mean to have the economical let's say uh, position uh, first of all the number of pieces mm -hmm. uh, number of pieces is really minimal here yeah and also, it is called aristocrat position because there are no pawns. Mm -hmm. Only the important pieces are there and no pawns. It's called aristocrat uh, position, aristocrat study. And the uh, economy is also in the play that there are not uh, many irrelevant sidelines, but it is the, all the lines are thematic. Mm -hmm. They belong to the theme, the, the, the main idea of the composition. Okay, thank you very much. And we can continue with the study. Thank you very much. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And now this study, first we try to solve it and then we will try to tell ourselves what do we see here? What kind of chess idea we see here? But first we have to find the best way, way to win for white. There is only one way, as we say, to win for white. And uh, we have to be quite uh, aggressive here because usually an uh, advantage of one piece is not sufficient to win such a position. Most of the position with bishop and rook against rook are totally drawn and not very difficult also. Uh, but but uh, here uh, we look at the position and we find a clue how to find the first move. We look at how the pieces are set on the board. The king, the black king and the black rook are standing on the same diagonal. So if the, the, the longest dark diagonal and we have a bishop of the same color. So what we try to do is maybe to pin this rook with a bishop and then we even when we, if we change the bishop for the rook, we are left with a winning rook ourselves, yes? Mm -hmm. Even if we exchange the bishop for the rook. So that makes the first move quite clear. And this is, I guess all of you have already found it, bishop b2. Yeah. We, are, we are creating here what is called a battery. A battery is uh, the, the the structure of the bishop and the white rook in front of it if if the rook if the rook will move then we pin the, the rook and win it for the bishop mm -hmm. yes so we have this but so the, our battery at the moment is masked it's called the masked battery because we have to actually to release the battery to leash out the battery by moving the rook that's the threat. Mm -hmm. so Black has many, many uh, moves with his king and his rook, but most of the rooks are losing at once. Mm -hmm. Because if we move the rook somewhere, even this check, yeah. even this check is replied by rook c1 check. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's called a discover check. Yeah. yeah. So this is a discover check that wins the rook. And by the way, if I may ask, it is the correct if we can say that if the one player gives check, the other uh, replies with the check is some like a cross check. Is it correct or not quite? It's exactly the, the term. Mm -hmm. It's called cross, cross check. Cross check. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Even, even over the board, I think they call it cross check. Yes. Yeah, probably it may be true. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the conclusion is that we have to stay near the king. Mm -hmm. that, that if we give, if we unleash this battery, mm -hmm. then, then the king can come and protect the rook. Yeah. So there are only four moves like it. Uh, to move the king is, is bad because then we check. Ah, sorry, it's also possible, but we can check from c7 and we win the, the rook. Yeah. Not from h3 because then he covers on h6. Mm -hmm. But from c7, 
we win now the he can protect the rook but we take the rook and we are remained with a whole rook up which i hope all our viewers can make uh, yeah yeah our viewers has this basic knowledge therefore they will able to do so uh -huh. that, that much i am sure they are yeah good. they are mm -hmm. yeah so if we look we try to find a, a, a square near the king is we have four of them we have rook f7 mm -hmm. and after rook f7 we cannot win the rook because the king will protect the rook but we can create after rook h3 king g8 rook h8 mate mm -hmm. beautiful because, one because because the move rook f7 turned to a self block it's a self block that uh, uh, doesn't allow the king to come to f7 mm -hmm. and rook h8 is not just a mate is a a model mate yeah a model mate yes why is it a model mate because every square around the black king is attacked only once mm -hmm. and uh, even the, the square which is self-blocked only once is uh, at, uh, covered attacked. I say cover, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. exactly. If also the white king would uh, participate in the mate picture, it would have been called ideal mate. Mm -hmm. Then it's the really the, the symbol of economy and the cooperation that all uh, pieces take part in the final picture, which show you all kinds of artistic ideas in, in the, our comp, uh, chess composition. Mm -hmm. uh, chess composition. Okay. Everything, uh, the sense, the the sense of aesthetics is very important. Mm -hmm. See here, several aesthetic. By the way, aesthetic can also help you in over the board chess mm -hmm. because you look for beauty. What I myself learned from my, my uh, uh, teacher Cherniak he was not a composer, but he was a real artist over the board. Mm -hmm. he, he really created pieces of art over the board, and I was very much impressed. He teach, taught us to appreciate chess beauty, and in my games, also he, as he did, and my, also my friends from the youth club, we are looking for the beauty even more than for the point. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> And what about another variation, if you can show us another variation, right? Yeah, I will show you what is going on. I, I go back to to the first move. After bishop b2, black has a, another term in chess to the echo square of f7, which is a g6. Mm -hmm. And now we get also an echo mate not the rook uh, h3 and rook h8 but now rook c8 check king h7 and here we have an echo mate made to the mate we have seen in the previous line mm -hmm. and by the way it is just rotation of the previous example right the rotation which makes uh, the mate like a kind of echo mm -hmm. the echo one mm -hmm. e echo in english yes yeah exactly. Uh, and uh, okay, but we have two another pair of squares which the rook can come. First of all, rook h6, they show it even as a main line, but it, uh, it's as main as the others. Here comes something much more beautiful mm -hmm. because after rook h6, we have to look for we cannot mate uh, at once because uh, there is no mate. Yeah. But but we can create something even more magic. After uh -huh. rook, rook g3 check to prevent the, the king from coming to g8, he should come to h7 only. Mm -hmm. And then check. Now we create a new battery. Yeah, excellent. With the rook, with the rook on g3. Now look at this, po this uh, position. It's white to play. Mm -hmm. What happens if it's black to play? Yeah. If it's black to play, he has no move on the board. Mm -hmm. Any move of the board, uh, uh, any move of the rook on any, to any square on the board 
the the uh, battery will be unleashed again mm -hmm. battery and we win the rook except if he checks on a6 yeah after rook a6 check there is no mate mm -hmm. and you know what will happen because if it was black to move he could play uh, sorry uh, it's black to move I, I cannot make it black to move. It's, no problem, but we can just tell us idea. I can, yeah, I can mm -hmm. show. Uh, or with the arrows, a6, if you can make it. Rook a6 to a6, check. Then after king b1, black plays rook a1, check. And when he takes the rook, it's stalemate. Mm -hmm. So white has to be very careful. It's his move, and he should find the on the only move which is king b1 yeah after king b1 there is no threat mm -hmm. moreover white is in a zugzwang but black here is in a uh, to move yeah and he is in complete zugzwang very important this kind of study really shows us something about zugzwang yeah all, all over the board he can, any move he plays, white uh, uh, unleash the the battery with a discover check to win the rook. Mm -hmm. Even rook h1 check is replied by a discover check. Mm -hmm. Cross check, right? Check and check, cross check. It's also a cross check. Uh -huh. This discover check is also a cross check. Yeah. Check on check, yes. Uh, uh, and wins the rook and wins the game. Mm -hmm. So, in this position, if we take this move uh, back, this yeah. move, yeah. black has black is in a total zugzwang and he loses in, uh, uh, because of this zugzwang. Mm -hmm. Thanks to this zugzwang. Uh, if we take this move back to a1, the only move is rook b1. He can also play uh, one move back. Uh, sorry. No problem. Two moves back. Uh huh. Uh, in this position, he can also play the echo move rook f8 mm -hmm. instead of rook h6. And after rook f8, we have again an echo variation. We check on, uh, excuse me, on c7 now, mm -hmm. not h3, but on c7. Yeah. It comes to g8, rook g7 check. And the difference is that before we came to now king b1, but now king b1 is bad because of rook f1 check. Mm -hmm. And there is no uh, good good move, but moving the king and again stalemate after rook a1 check. Yeah. So the only move here is to play king a2. Mm -hmm. While king b1 was the move before, yeah. and this is an echo move, and now black again is in a total zugzwang all over the board, mm -hmm. with only five pieces on the board. This is a beautiful study the, uh, made by an Italian uh, composer called Bianchetti, yeah. and uh, this is a very nice discovery. Important. I didn't mention a very important uh, term, which is good for all creations in all genres of chess composition, and this is originality. Mm -hmm. If you show this idea for the first time, the, the, and it means the study is original and it uh, raises its level of uh, its value in the eyes of the judges uh, of the chess composition attorneys and also in the eyes of chess history and database and etc etc mm -hmm. one so, one small question if i may ask because our viewers probably are pretty curious and that's why in behalf of them i'll ask this question this position as you just presented is the eco one from the previous one right yes, yes. and now i would like you to just give a little bit of hint how white could win after now at this position playing with, with black rook f6 if you can show us because this is pretty much tricky okay if black play rook f6 okay so if right black... because it's a very interesting i guess right yes mm -hmm. with the idea of uh, if white jumps and takes the rook then uh -huh. 
And then uh, Black uh, saved half a point in the game. Due to the stalemate, right? D due to stalemate, yes, or pat in many languages. Mm -hmm. yes. And and uh, uh, but here, the problem is that there is more than one move. Mm -hmm. But how we can win this position, to say the least? Y you want me to say? Yeah, yeah, to say how to win this position. By any move of the white rook. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Okay. What is the reason? Yes, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Any move except rook g8 and rook h7. Yeah, due to blunders. The, re the reason is that after rook moves, the 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 black rook is pinned. Mm -hmm. Is pinned by the white bishop, and uh, even is lost completely. Not he cannot black cannot have, even have the bishop for the rook mm -hmm. because the king cannot come and defend the rook. So. Black, the best move for Black now is just to resign. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, yeah, but the problem is that there is no beauty in it. And why not? Because I told you in the first place that it's very important the all moves will be the only moves. Mm -hmm. and here, any moves almost is winning. If there in, in uh, any um, stage of the solution, there is more than one move the move that the composer intended and a kind of cook also mm -hmm. uh, uh, unintended uh, second move then the second move is a defect and it, the professional term is a dual it's called the dual and if the dual is uh, really important in a main line like this this is not a main line this is uh, rook f6 is not a main line but if it's, it happens in a main line, the study is more or less disqualified. It's a big defect. Mm -hmm. So that shows how difficult it is to, to compose a, not only a beautiful study, but also a correct one. Okay, excellent. And uh, if we can uh, just make a little bit of pause, because in a moment we'll get into the next position. But before that, We'll just introduce uh, the readers, uh, sorry, the audience with some of your books. Is that okay? No, just I would like first just to tell, because that's what we plan to do, mm -hmm. to ask ourselves what are the main themes and motives. Okay. In a very simple position, mm -hmm. which is very important that we, we know. And why does it help us for the game? Because many, uh, not many, but several motives that happens in a real game are already in this position. Mm -hmm. We have seen, first of all, the battery. Yeah. We have seen the pinning. Yeah. We have seen the model mates. Mm -hmm. And we have seen the big one, the Zugzwang. Yeah. So all these motives in such a, a pure and economical position, which we will never forget. Mm -hmm. If we learn it by very complicated uh, positions from over the board, even grandmasters, we, it's difficult to remember, but to, to solve such a study, just put these kind of patterns in our brain forever. That's why it's so important for uh, the trainers, trainers all over the world, I can tell you, you know, the Indian Empire, chess empire, the, the best com uh, trainer there is considered uh, Grandmaster Ramesh. Mm -hmm. He's the trainer of all the, not all of, but many of the young, uh, he's also the captain of them uh, often, of the young big talents there. And why I mention him? If you want to see a fantastic show of solving endgame studies by the by the, the Indian pro prodigies, you say, by the wonderkins, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah, the wonder boys, yeah, like uh, Pragnananda, yeah, and yes, Pragnananda, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and Vidit even, yes, and, uh, Vidit Guriati. Mm -hmm. Look, look for uh, in YouTube for these videos where they solve endgame studies blindfold. Yeah, blindfold. Mm -hmm. With their eyes covered. Yeah, it's, impressive. It's really a, a, a show. It's really a show. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and then you will really get appetite for solving endgame studies like Ab them. Yes, absolutely.
Okay, so what, what, and then what we now we going to... Yes, the first position was just described. Now we're just going a little bit about your books because step by step we'll be showing some of your books and we'll be having the questions from the chat, okay? Okay. And for one of the books that I would like to share with our audience, because I just show it many, many times, is the book Practical Chess Beauty. This Practical. is the book, yes, yeah. this is the book that was published by Quality Chess. And this is the hardcover, a beautiful edition. And therefore, if you'd like to make a little bit of insight, what is the what the book consists and what you shared inside this book, some like what is valuable for the audience to have such a book. Yes. Mm -hmm. First, I would uh, first I would mention that th this book was also published in Russian by the Russian Chess Federation, like uh, one year ago or, or one and a half years ago. Uh, but the the contents of the books are very personal. For many years, uh, Yakov Agard, who is one of the bosses of uh, uh, Quality Chess, yeah. he really uh, tries to persuade me to publish a book with my own endgame studies and games. Mm -hmm. And actually, so the book is uh, divided into categories like rooks, pawns, but, but most of the books, the, the, the lion's share of the book is my own compositions. 90% uh, of them are endgame studies, but also a few problems as well. And, and my better games. Mm -hmm. So, and, and uh, uh, through my own games, I teach all kinds of other things there. And uh, uh, yeah, there are so many. It's quite a, a big book, but it, it was well received, especially the the purple color of it is something that uh, special. The girlfriend of At Jacob attracts Jacob, attention. Uh -huh. Yeah, I called it a deep purple book, and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and the girlfriend of Jacob Agard. Yeah. Her name is Kalia. Yes. She was the, she made the cover. Oh, the excellent. Cover. Excellent. She works for Quality Chess and she made it and I'm very happy because it catches the eye immediately. Yeah, the, the cover of the, the book is up to absolutely fantastic. And the yes. picture on the book and the layout, all of this color, all of the graphical stuff is absolutely amazing. Therefore, I fully agree with you. Mm -hmm. I will. I will tell her that that you said that. Yes, I tell. I, I, you can tell it because in in the group I will just thank her as well when I post the video at YouTube and then post into the chess collectors group, right? Because I'll just post the video on the YouTube at some point and then I'll just show you the link as well. Okay. There is there is also a, a page on Facebook of uh, Quality Chess. Maybe you can. Yeah, of course I will just share there as well. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, if we can get slowly into the next position, if you can show up the next position, we can continue. Mm -hmm. Of course. So we go to number two now. I just pro uh, press the arrow, yes? Uh, you can just uh, click, uh, yes, click no, because you do not need to save the, yes, save the variations and next position. And, and now we have the next position. And uh, this, this position is a rook ending. I have a special, uh, I'm fond of rook endings. They are actually the most uh, related to over the board chess. They always look very natural. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, even the themes are quite natural. We always want to promote with all kinds of rook ending tricks. But uh, this position, uh, white is trying to promote his pawn and we try to solve it it is not difficult it is even a short solution and the first move is even was guessed by all of you which is h7 mm -hmm. the most natural move threatening simply to promote yeah now we have to look and it's very important also to mention that in endgame studies not only the white moves are important. Important also the counterplay of black to, to show really tough defense, to show that it is a really a real battle and not just and, and black is not just a statist there, but but he really also 
has his own tactical ideas uh, for defense. And Black here has to, to find, first of all, a simple defense against promotion. Mm -hmm. Because Rook A8, maybe I play this move, yeah. is, uh, is met by the simple Rook G8. So, and, and wins. And the promotion next. Mm -hmm. and promote next, yes. Yeah. So uh, we take the move, the, these moves back, and after h7 we should look for a more sophisticated, uh, yeah, a more sophisticated uh, defense. Mm -hmm. It's not so sophisticated because if we cannot stop directly the pawn, we have to look for counterplay in other way, yeah. and, uh, and the other way here in this position is to go for the white king by threatening mate in one on h3, mm -hmm. which forces white to check on f6. Otherwise, there is no other defense against the mate. Yeah. So after check, black continues to threaten mate with king g3, mm -hmm. threatening rook a1 mate, yeah. uh, mate next move, mate in two. Uh, so, again, we cannot uh, promote. So, the question is what to do here? How to allow white to promote without b uh, being bothered by the mate uh, threat of the rook? Mm -hmm. There is only one move, not so very difficult. Yeah. What we are doing now is moving the rook all the way to a6. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing the rook. The idea of sacrificing the rook is that we open the... We are already familiar with the long dark diagonal from the previous study. And uh, on this diagonal, when the diagonal is open, then the new queen will control the square a1. So after rook takes a6, which, which is more, of, more or less a must. Mm -hmm. There is no way to stop the promotion. Yeah. Then, um, this is the, the new main line, yes. So he, he takes on a6 and white, white uh, simply promotes. Yeah, promote the queen to cover the a1 square to defend against the checkmate, right? And win the game in a technical way. Mm -hmm. Yes, queen versus rook is winning with the hope that our viewers can mate with a queen against rook. And probably because... probably you would like to me to mention that we have done it three weeks ago, because I presented the simple ideas about a uh, queen fighting against the bishop, against the knight, against bishop knight, against two knights, against two bishops, and finally against queen versus rook. Therefore, our, uh, our audience know it already. Very good. So we give the audience credit that we don't have to continue the play. Even we, if we did so, we just waste our time because it doesn't belong to the study. Yeah. There are many duals, many defects. Yes, absolutely. Because there are many winning moves, right? So we can proceed to the next one. Yes. But I just one yeah? very important thing mm -hmm. that I want is to always to give credit to the composer. Yeah, and who is the composer, if you may ask? The composer of this uh, study is a Russian composer with the name Tigran Gorgiev. Mm -hmm. This Tigran is like Tigran Petrosian, so it means he's not Russian f originally from Moscow, but in a mixed family or something, yes? But yes, yeah. Gorgiev, a very excellent composer of endgame studies and the study is as early as from 1929 in the soviet magazine shahmati mm -hmm. yes that's correct and if i, I remember i remember you remember this uh I, I know this, I know this, let's say, magazines, because yes. I, even if I didn't read that much, I know Russian for the sake of learning chess literature. Yes. And that's why I know many of the, uh, let's say, Russian books, especially Shachmate or Shachmatny Bulletin, as they say, and so, some of them uh, are after the, let's say, uh, transition into the new system, is some like Chess 64, right? Because it was the change about the name. No, no, but 64 existed 
already in the 70s. Oh. Yes, I, I was buying it in a shop in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. I, I don't uh, I don't speak Russian. Yeah. But I I can recognize many words there. Mm -hmm. Because I used to collect stamps as a kid. I learned this uh, Cyrillic letters. Uh -huh. I, yeah, and I used to buy all those books. They were so cheap in the in Tel Aviv, in the Russian uh, books stores. I bought all the books of the great endgame study composers, all the Kasparians, everything I had as a as a child and as a youth uh, uh, composer, and that helped me really to get a full idea of what was going in the market and make progress and uh, uh, really uh, uh, profit from it for my own my own progress. Mm -hmm. So. So that is Gorgi, one of the classic classics of the Soviet school of endgame study. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And just by the way, because I am just looking at the computer, if we can back uh, into the previous position, because you presented the first position and the third one. Therefore, you just skipped one position. If you get a little bit... I skipped one. I yeah, it's not a problem. It's no problem. Just get into the previous position. Okay. It would be the second one from our list. This one. This yes. One. Yes. But I before... Will, we'll... You are right. That was the second No one. problem. No problem. I'm monitoring all of this stuff. But before yes. we get into this position, in a moment we'll be discussing this, I would like to ask you about another book that you wrote. And this is the book with the co-author, Emmanuel Nyman. The book's title is Invisible Chess Moves. Can you give us a little bit of insight what this book all about and what you just uh, shared inside this book by New in Chess publication, Inside Invisible Chess Moves, but with en Emmanuel Nyman. By, just yeah. mm -hmm, a little bit of description. In Invisible Chess Moves, first of all, appeared, its first appearance was in French. My uh, co-author, Emmanuel Nyman, is... Um, uh, French uh, chess player, yes. This book he also wrote, that's true, yes. And very good book. And uh, uh, he asked me if I want to cooperate with him. It was his idea uh, uh, to, and, and write together this uh, book about positions and moves which are often missed by players. Mm -hmm and to try to, un because he made an investigation why certain moves are missed by even very good players. Mm -hmm. They are missed because they, they are a bit um, unusual, mm -hmm. a bit uh, more than a bit actually. And some, sometimes they are missed uh, really, you don't believe it that I don't believe it sometimes because I am endgame study composer. Because these moves are composition-like sometimes, mm -hmm. like a, a really out of a fairy tale. Yeah. So it's they are rare, and they are paradoxical. Mm -hmm. They are against what we are brought up on about the basics and fundamentals of the game that we are brought up from youth from the beginning. That's that is because uh, players often don't think out of the box. Mm -hmm. So there are many also psychological reasons. Yeah. Not to mention uh, time travel and stuff like this, but these are not discussed in the book uh, because this is a well-known disease, uh, time trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so we just uh, uh, shared the, the burden in this book. Emmanuel has his, his theory and explanations. And I collected the examples. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So it's actually his idea and the idea as I described, and he gives all, all the reasons. This book, by the way, was very well received because it, it was uh, selected at that year, 2011. It was uh, uh, the English, the English uh, version after mm -hmm. the French. The English version was uh, selected by uh, as the book of the year. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, from all chess books of from of that year, and it was translated to various languages, uh, including even 
it, it appeared also in Persian. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I got one copy. Okay, <laughs> it's pretty nice because as an offer, you should have the copy, right? <laughs> but my name is one is not on the cover. Oh, <laughs> it is some like a draft version, <laughs> right? Because I belong to the wrong nation. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a pity. Not, not in my eyes, yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. And let's get into the next position that you just presented and we can continue. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And this position is really a very nice one. Uh, this is a study which I like very much by uh, Ernst Pogosyans. He's a Russian grandmaster of chess composition. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not with us anymore for many years since 91 but he, com he is maybe the most prolific composer in the history of the endgame study mm -hmm. he composed maybe 5000 uh, wow endgame studies amazing and i asked myself how come he, he he was only 59 when he passed away how did he manage and then i found part of the secret what was the secret he was a dissident mm -hmm. soviet union yeah and uh, I, I don't know if our viewers know what uh, in the Soviet times there were people who were not uh, who were persona. We can call it persona non grata, right? Exactly. The person exactly. that was not accepted by political regime. So he lost his job. Mm -hmm. He lost his job. And, you know, Yuri Averbach, who was also a, a great endgame theoretician, mm -hmm. he was also the editor of Shachmatni Bulletin and Shachmatni VSSR mm -hmm. in, uh, in the central club of uh, Moscow in Gogolevsky Boulevard and I visited him also there and Yuri Averbach himself told me that uh, he used to ask Pogosians, the mm -hmm. composer of this study, to compose positions which he put at the uh, maybe you can remember it at the back page of uh, Shachmatni Bulletin mm -hmm. and Shachmatni VSSR there were, were positions. Yeah. These positions were small studies that composed by Pogosians that he could pay him something to, that he can make a little living because he lost his job. He had to make Wow. Some Amazing. Studies. Yes. So he maybe was the only professional in, in the history of the endgame study yeah? and uh, yeah maybe maybe him and myself mm -hmm. and by the way we are just talking because our viewers may not recognize that much but some of you probably uh, may that uh, our friend Johanan just met the legend uh, Yuri Averbach if you can get a little bit of insight about Yuri Averbach about his personality related to chess, right? Because Yuri Averbach, as far as I remember, passed away two years ago at the age of 100 or 101. Back yes. then he was one of the oldest living grandmasters. If you can get us a little bit into, let's say your uh, contact with Yuri Averbach, some like the personal one, just yeah, briefly. Mm -hmm. The personal one. Okay, of course he was a great uh, grandmaster, and uh, but he was many things and I, from my experience, I met him, first of all, in 1988, I had, I participated in a chess seminar of, of trainers in uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. It was all Soviet Union at the time. Uh, the, the seminar took place in uh, Abkhazia. It's part of Georgia in a town called Suhumi. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a shore by the, uh, how do you call it? A holiday resort, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, there were people from several, uh, many countries, mostly developing countries, and I also was there in, the, in this seminar. The, seminar by grandmasters grandmasters like edward gufeld sveshnikov uh, 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 panchenko all, all these guys were the teachers in this mm -hmm. the chief of the seminar was yuri averbach excellent yeah he was the chief of the uh, and uh, we had many nice talks that the first time there was also in the same building 
because it uh, was a, a, a sports center mm -hmm. called, Ash, in, uh, uh, called Ashera, and uh, that was an Olympic sports center, that we had our seminar there, but also I met there all the Soviet composers, endgame study composers, they were training. It's just a big coincidence. They were training for the match USSR against the rest of the world. And I was in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that they make such a seminar. And there I met all the great names of the uh, study composition in the Soviet Union. And Yuri Averbach was also there. And we had some talks. And uh, he gave also some uh, uh, good lectures. It was a fantastic experience for me. But it was not the last time I met him. In 1991, I was myself the, uh, it's called Bond's coach, uh, the, the coach of the uh, juniors in Israel, mm -hmm. uh, the chess uh, big talents in Israel. Yeah. A few names to have an idea were Emil Sutovsky, mm -hmm. uh, Boris Avruch, Alik Gershon, uh, many grand, they became many of them grandmasters. Uh, and I was uh, 10 years their uh, coach and uh, I took them to world championships and to all kinds like uh, all, yeah, I cannot even count uh, how uh, and one time we went to a camp in the region of Moscow with the whole my whole squad. Mm -hmm. We went there because they wanted to give us something back for hosting the Soviet players in the European Championship in uh, in Haifa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the year before in 1990. So in 91 we went to uh, it was in Ozero Krugloe, which is the Round Lake in Russia, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not so far from Moscow, we had a camp of 10 days, also with grandmasters. And who was the chief of this camp? Of course, the great Yuri Averbach. Mm -hmm. so he was, I remember him, he was a great sportsman. That's why he lived 100 years. He was swimming every day and uh, fantastic. And one of them was also Bareyev, was also teaching there. and was also a great experience. Mm -hmm. The third time I met him was already in the Netherlands in some uh, a jubilee of, a, of the oldest chess club and the biggest chess club in uh, Amsterdam. And I think I also met him uh, in some other opportunities, but these are the most memorable for me. Okay, thank you very much. It was a great, uh, let's say, insight and anecdote. And if we can get into the position, because our audience already is trying to solve it pretty much uh, without too much uh, effort. Therefore, what is the idea behind this position? The idea without uh, in, in, uh, behind this position, position uh -huh. is that, f first of all, we have to, uh, of course, to uh, 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 find out what is the problem here. The problem is that black is leading in material. Mm -hmm. White wants to save the, the, the day, to save the game. It's not only that White is uh, behind in material, but also his king is in a met net. Mm -hmm. So it's an uh, immediate danger. Yeah. So, so we have, we cannot uh, just play uh, positional moves. We have to to attack. Yeah. We need to play dynamically, right? Dynamically, it means checks. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't give checks, we will be mate. Yeah. So check here. Mm -hmm. Only move is king g5. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the, the right. What what do I do? No, no, sorry. Uh, the, the mouse cursor, right? You just click a little ah, bit yeah, too much. I checked. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's true. So the next check is check here. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. That's a, a very nice move because Black can take the rook in two ways. Yeah. Can take by by the... By the queen and by the knight. And some people would say that this is a blunder, right? It's a blunder because there will be... Uh, each of these moves will be followed by a fork. Mm -hmm. If knight takes e5, 
Knight e4 check. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes, the fork from e4. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, just a moment. If queen takes e5, then we have a check on f7. Mm -hmm. So the only move is king h6. Yeah. And after king h6, what to do? Mm -hmm. We cannot afford, uh, sorry. Ah. So we checked here, mm -hmm. and king h6. Yeah. Uh, we cannot afford playing uh, quiet moves here. We have no time for quiet moves because there is a mate on h4 threatened and uh, just any any other uh, uh, black has many threats. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue with sacrificial moves. Fantastic move, rook h5 check. Wow. And now if he comes to g7, we have a new fork on e8. Uh huh. Amazing. So he has. He must take on h5, mm -hmm. which forces us to play g4 check. Just the pawn check. Yes. <laughs> just the pawn. If, if yeah, just a little check. Mm -hmm. Look how economic the whole thing is against the queen. Yeah. Yeah. King g5. We have check on e4. Mm -hmm. It's full of forks, so he must come to h6. And now g5 check. And it's all of a sudden a draw because if king takes g5, the knight e4 check. And if queen takes g5, knight f7 check. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not count how many forks were there, but in such an open position, it's really, it looks like a miracle. Mm -hmm. It is pretty impressive because there are not that many pieces. And it looks like the position is completely lost from the first side. But if you yes. get deeper, it is some like a miraculous safe. So now you understand why this is really teaches you how to think out of the box and look for hidden resources in desperate positions. Mm -hmm. It looks like a real desperate position. And this is one of the thousand uh, studies that uh, Ernst Pogosians composed really very nice one mm -hmm. it was uh, published by him in Shachmatnaya Moskva in 1959 got it so is that now, now, yeah now we we'll just have to ask ourselves what motives we have seen here mm -hmm. not, not much but much of one motive which is the fork yeah the fork with various various uh, types right yes the fork it by is. the pawn and the fork by the knight yes especially knight forks mm -hmm. uh, the, the knight is most uh, identified with forks because the knight goes the, differently than other pieces so he's always in an ambush for forks uh, forking we used in my childhood we used to to call a uh, check to for example to the the, uh, the king and the queen and the rook and the uh, uh, simultaneously mm -hmm. we, called it, we called it a family fork yeah and nowadays it is called the same especially at the books or world books for the children family forks many times it's called this way as well yeah that's possible yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we did not pretend to invent this term we've probably heard it from Cherniak. <laughs> yeah yeah and if you can tell uh, if you can talk a little bit about uh, your career because now we are getting into the next position in a moment but before that if you can get us a little bit of insight about your career as a player as a composer and as an organizer just briefly but a little bit of insight if you wish okay uh, so as a chess organizer I, uh, I start with organizer because it's easy. Mm -hmm. I was uh, organizing, I would say, hundreds of chess events in my native country. And uh, I was, as I mentioned before, I was uh, the director of the municipal chess club for uh, some six years, but I was a player in this club for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, 
Uh, I started this as uh, af uh, immediately after the uh, Cherniak passed away. I took over uh, the, uh, to continue the tradition of the club, and I was uh, running it. And uh, the, the most important event that I uh, initiated there is the Tel Aviv uh, International Festival. Mm -hmm. In this festival, it was a huge festival in the holiday of uh, Passover, which is the Hebrew, pa how do you call it, Pas Pascha? How do you call it in the, the Passen, Pascha? It is the religious uh, religious event, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the, in April, there was also always uh, an international uh, chess uh, uh, festival. And in this festival, were, were, uh, there were uh, an, uh, a closed Grandmaster event mm -hmm. with famous players taking part, like just to mention a few, like Taimanov was taking place, uh, taking part, like uh, uh, Mikhail Gurevich. I am mentioning some winners and uh, like uh, some uh, English Grandmasters and others. That was, and there was also the Israel Open Championship in this mm -hmm. uh, festival, and and youth uh, events and simultans and uh, many events. That was like uh, for 10, 12 years I was doing that. I was also uh, running other events. I was uh, running some Israeli championship uh, uh, finals of the Israeli championship over the years and etc etc many I, I was also uh, okay uh, not only an organizer i was teaching in many schools and and, and uh, gifted uh, chess players uh, etc uh, camps in summer and, uh, and so on and so on mm -hmm. as a player i was playing hundreds of chess tournaments in not only in israel but all over europe as well uh, and since I've been living in the Netherlands, I played all the Dutch tournaments for many editions of them. And I was working also for many years in Vikenze in the uh, Tata Steel tournament. Uh, also, I had some chess composition roles there. I organized there solving the, the daily problem and uh, study solving 10 editions there and uh, the daily was everybody in the village was solving the daily two mover uh, mm -hmm. for prizes and stuff uh, and uh, uh, when there were five years uh, every five years there was also some jubilee of uh, the tournament composing terni with uh, great composers uh, from the whole world like perviakov like Bazlov, like other ones, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, and I played tournaments in uh, many countries. Uh, I played for, I think, five or six leagues. I played for the Dutch league, for the Israeli league, for the German league, many years, and for the French league, the top French league, uh, and the Belgian league. Mm -hmm. One season I also played for the Spanish League, and and uh, uh, yeah, I, I played the uh, Opens and I also played some uh, invitations. Okay, the, the most memorable tournaments for me, I mentioned one when I won the Paris uh, Championship in 2002. I made uh, my biggest performance ever, mm -hmm. 2680. Uh, wow. Yes, I played there if i remember uh, if i would like uh, to if i you would like to know i played there i won the first three games against like 2200 players and then i played from round four to round nine six grandmasters in a row wow impressive six like fresine chekachev uh, Episela, Alberto David, uh, uh, Rahman from Bangladesh, and Shabanon in the last round. Mm -hmm. and, and I made seven and a half points, un, unbeaten. Yeah. The Grandmaster uh, Norm, and the, the biggest money prize ever I, I received. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the final 
uh, ceremony, the prize giving, was on the 14th of July, mm -hmm. 2002. 14th of July is also the national day in France, 14 juillet, yes? Yeah. The, the Bastille, Jour de la Bastille. Mm -hmm. And we played very near to the Champs Elysees. And in Champs Elysees, uh, Jacques Chirac, yeah. the president, was giving a speech and someone tried to take a rifle and to assassinate him. Oh my goodness. And they jumped and they jumped. It was in the same uh, moment that I got my big biggest pro trophy of 10 kilos mm -hmm. as the winner of the French ch uh, championship, uh, Paris championship. And, um, and that's what, uh, a very memorable uh, event for me. Got it. it was a kind of miracle because because not only I didn't lose any game, I even was not worse in any moment in any game. Wow! Until today, I cannot explain what happened. Mm -hmm. But that means that means every player has his moment. Yeah. We just have to work hard and to hope and to and and really to to have a strong uh, willpower to have uh, some but that was my best achievement mm -hmm. uh, the uh, highest number of points in a tournament i made when i was 64 which is very symbolic for chess. yeah symbolic pretty one uh-huh yes so i was 64 in 2016 and i won the harlem harlem is a town near amsterdam yeah a very nice one very uh, recommended to much recommended to visit this place and i won the uh, open championship of harlem with eight and a half out of nine points. wow it is crushing so the field not, as they say <laughs> it was not as <laughs> it, was, it was not as strong as paris championship of course but it was a memorable uh, score for mm -hmm. me especially in such an advanced age. So uh, these are the two most memorable tournaments as a player. Mm -hmm. As a composer, th there, was a there was a highlight every day because composition gives you really highlights, uh, fantastic ideas all the time. Yes, it, it doesn't depend on mood. The, the, they are always there in the database of endgame studies of Harold van der Heiden, uh, mm -hmm. uh, men. Yeah. There, are, there are more than 93,000 endgame studies. And he's one of the biggest collectors, if I can say that, right, in the world? I think the biggest. The biggest, mm -hmm. Because he, he uh, had the idea that he has about 85% of all what was composed. Mm -hmm. it means he had to really to look at every magazine. And yeah, it is laborious work. Incredible. This is a very busy man in his daily life. He has a very responsible job and a family. Uh -huh. and he still makes every five years a new edition of this database to to update it uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine, lives in the city of Deventer in the Netherlands. And uh, uh, yeah, so these are uh, on the just just the tip of the iceberg of uh, what I can tell about my all these careers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And now we have the questions from the chat because we are very, very, let's say, happy that you are sharing that many anecdotes and facts that is pretty much unknown. One of the questions is from our friend uh, who is just curious about the rating of the composers and he just makes such questions. I'll just read the question. Do composers have a study rating in mind? At some puzzles, only likely to solve by grandmasters, while some of are composed for more general audience or average players. How could you explain such questions? Okay, about rating. Mm -hmm. There is no rating in composing. Okay. The best, the best uh, compositions mm -hmm. are competing on the right to be included in a three years periodical, which is called Fide Album. Mm -hmm. And the best studies and problems are in, uh, uh, selected by special judges to be included there. By these studies that go to the FIDE album, you get points for each study or problem. And if 
if a person uh, uh, scores in all albums, doesn't matter, 12 points, he becomes a, a feeder master in composition. Mm -hmm. If he uh, scores 25 points, he's international master. Yeah. And if he scores 70 points, he is a grandmaster. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to be included in FIDE album with so many, because every study that get in with a big competition is only one point. So to get 70 points, you need really a lot of high qualified uh, studies or problems. And uh, I passed this, uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh, this benchmark. Yeah. This benchmark. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, yeah, but there is in the world one grandmaster of chess composition who made it five times. Wow, who is that? His name is Petko Petkov. Oh, Petko Petkov from Yugoslavia probably, right? No, no, no. Petko no? Petkov uh, could be maybe from Yugoslavia, but this is more like a Bulgarian name. Oh, Bulgaria, sorry, because there are a similar one. Yeah, yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. he's, he's Bulgarian, a great mm -hmm. Person. I know him and uh, he is now quite old, but he is a fantastic composer. But I don't think he composed even one endgame study in his life. Oh, he is a composer of other genres, mm -hmm. and especially self mates and stuff, but really great stuff. Mm -hmm. He's by maybe the best composer in the history. The best study composer in the history is, in my opinion, Genrich Kasparian. Mm -hmm. Kasparian is one of the most known in all of the community. I mean, no matter if the composer or players, but Kasparian is even known very much to the uh, practical players. He is known to not only for his uh, fantastic studies, uh, and we have to remember that he composed in an era that there were no computers at all, and all his fantastic uh, masterpieces mm -hmm. were done without the help of the engines. Yeah. And, but he also wrote many books about endgame studies and uh, what not many people know that he was over the board champion of Armenia 10 times. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Over the board, yes. Wow. And this is a great uh, name. Mm -hmm. His son was also a composer, but he never lived to the level of his great father. Mm -hmm. uh, uh Gasparian, by the way, if we mention that he was a grandmaster, he was one of the first four composers who got the title of grandmaster of chess composition in 1958 in Congress Piran. Uh, every year there is a Congress of Chess Composition somewhere in the world. And uh, the, in this Congress, the, uh, also the uh, World Championship for solving is taking place mm -hmm. for, teams, for teams. Myself, I took part in this uh, uh, competition world championship for teams with a friend, Israeli friend of mine. We were the team and uh, in 1977 in Malinska in uh, Croatia, yeah. or still Yugoslavia, yes, and uh, uh, and uh, 78 uh, in 77 uh, we took the bronze medal and 78 the the no i made a mistake silver medal and 78 bronze medal mm -hmm. okay thank you very much and one more question for our friend mike but, but yeah? i want i want to uh add because okay. he asked about it yeah that there is rating for solvers okay okay mm -hmm. It's a long, uh, long list of rating, and there are many solving tournaments uh, in the world, uh, competitions, and uh, you get points and lose points according to your uh, performances. That's in very short. Mm -hmm. Okay, and one more question from our friend uh, Mike, uh, Mike is uh, about the book. And Mike asked the question, does Yokanan uh, know about Herman Hesse's novel The Glass Beat Game? And if you can, if you can, if he can draw inspiration of parallels to the beauty of chess studies, if you know this book. I don't know. I know Herman Hesse name and uh, the, uh, maybe is one or two best books, but I cannot tell anything about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. We can continue. It, 
it anyway did not inspire me personally. Yeah, okay, okay, no problem. If we can continue with the next position, because we have a few more to show. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the next one will... Just a moment. The next one is, uh, is... This we saw already, and this is the next one. This is very short. Yeah. Also, a uh, rook ending. And it's why to play and win. Yeah. White uh, first move is quite uh, obvious, I think. Because if he doesn't uh, try to promote now, then he will not promote. Uh, after rook a8, uh, black easily deals with this pawn. Because, mm -hmm. the, because the king and the rooks are quite far away of their pawn, so they cannot do much to uh, protect, to secure its promotion. Mm -hmm. So we just play b7, which is the most natural move in uh, in the world. And uh, after b7, the only way to uh, avoid, to prevent promotion, is to pin the pawn. Yeah. And it looks like... Uh, it looks like uh, uh, black is fine. Mm -hmm. And in a moment, black captures the pawn. There is no threat, and the game is easily drawn, at least. Right? Uh, it looks like. Yeah, the uh, black is better if he takes the pawn. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, better, but maybe also draw. Yeah, because yeah. The white king comes quick to back to the to to, to deal with this pawn. Mm -hmm. So we need an idea how to uh, promote this pawn after all. Yeah. There is only one idea, and the idea is to do to do something to break this pin. Mm -hmm. So we check. Yeah. He cannot play king d7 because then uh, he unpins the pawn. So only move is king d8. And now comes the highlight. Oh like my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the move. <laughs> Just unpinning the pawn. Yeah. Sacrificing the rook. Yeah, but shocking one. Yeah, it's uh, when you see it first time, uh, it's really surprising. Yeah, amazing. And this he cuts the the seventh rank. Mm -hmm. We are used to we are used to rooks coming to seventh rank, but not in this way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rook e7 cuts the whole pinning line yeah the black either he takes it or not if he doesn't take i promote next move mm -hmm. there is no way to stop this pawn yeah and if he takes i promote anyway amazing and then we come to the to the ending that all of you have already seen uh, with thomas uh, the other time yeah yeah the lectures mm -hmm. yes so queen against rook is a winning uh, Although nobody hears, I can tell you that one time I played against a grandmaster, queen against rook ending, and I did not win. Mm -hmm. But there were special circumstances. I know how to win, but there were. But I tell you, it. His name was Ian Rogers. Ian Rogers from Australia, probably, right? He's from Australia. Australia. Mm -hmm. Ian Rogers. Live, he, many years he used to live half a year in the Netherlands every year. Mm -hmm. So, the next one, or you have another? I'll just briefly get a little bit uh, next of the book, because you are just uh, having more books, and after that we'll be speeding up a little bit more. Is that okay? okay. Now, we have, now we have the book that our friend Johanna Afek wrote with co-author Hans Bem, and this is the book, The Royal Couple in Action. The book is uh, published by Thinkers Publishing, by the way. And at the same time, this is the book that I would like you to elaborate a little bit more especially about the series of books you publish in Dutch, right? Because this is pre pretty much important because this knowledge is practically invisible or inaccessible. Can you tell us a little bit about The Real Couple in Chess, the book, and the books that you publish with, with the, let's say, co-author in Dutch? Yes. So, mm -hmm. so fir first of all, I want to refer to the name of the book because you mentioned the book, the... the uh, how do you call it? The Royal, Royal Chess Couple in Action. 
Yes, but you 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 omitted the word chess before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Probably I, I was too quickly. Uh huh. The reason that I uh, included the word chess, which is really obvious from the cover, uh -huh. uh, is that in if you in the Netherlands you say the royal uh, couple, it can be a real royal couple as well. Because mm -hmm. There is a royal couple in the Netherlands. Yeah. And then all the fans of the royal couple might buy this book and then be disappointed that they see chess inside. Yeah. But Oh, it is the royal chess couple to mm -hmm. make things clear. This book is a, a united book of two Dutch books that I wrote with the same uh, co-author uh, about the king and the queen, mm -hmm. which is in Dutch, the Koning and the Koningin. Uh, we had books for each of the chess pieces. We had a series of six books, a book per year from 2000, uh, uh, yeah, about 2010 to 2015, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, this series was nicely received in the in the Netherlands and in Belgium, perhaps too. Uh, the book includes positions where the piece is at his best, both by showing the best moves. This a piece uh, made both in over the board classics and in end game studies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also in chess problems or positions of curiosity. So yeah. uh, each book includes 240 positions in six, 60 uh, uh, categories, in 60 chapters, mm -hmm. different uh, uh, thematic chapters. So uh, and also there is the history of the piece inside and some nice photos of different kinds of uh, shapes of the piece and and, and uh, uh, two of them we made the royal one we made also for the Belgian uh, publishers so that, that's should I tell something else about it no no it's okay it's perfectly fine and we can continue with the next position if you if you wish of course mm -hmm. Ah, that's also a rook and thing. <laughs> and by the way, because may, maybe you may not have this knowledge, but all of the channel members and the audience know that I am a rook and game lover. Therefore, ah. whatever rook and game you put, I am smiling because I love rook and gates. So I should, br I, I could put all of them rook and things. Probably it would be the best for me, but I'm not sure about the audience. <laughs> I think uh, it's nice because I tell you, rook endings has a very fort, uh, a very wrong uh, uh, reputation. Mm -hmm. They are technical and boring, mm -hmm. but they are not. Uh, I I composed many rook endings to show that they can be highly tactical as well. Mm -hmm. And For by example, the way, and to to put, to put a little bit uh, into the uh, let's say uh, chat. I just uh, provided the course of the Rook End Games tactical one, some like the ones that you presented two months ago. Therefore, we are prepared for you very well. Ah, yes, okay, <laughs> yes very... I did it with our audience. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. so, so this again, we are with a baby study, yeah. which is called in Russian Malutka uh, uh, with five pieces. As we saw, the first one was also with five pieces and here we have a really a, a maneuver that sometimes we find also in over the board games. Mm -hmm. So it's that really we take something for the uh, for the real game. Yeah. Yeah. We want to to win with white, and uh, we have to promote this pawn, or at least to win the rook for this pawn. So we have to play a six. With the with the threat a seven yes mm -hmm. so he comes makes the black makes the most natural move rook a four now a seven mm -hmm. he cannot take the the pawn because we have a new motive here 
after rook takes a7, I think we meet today the first time. Uh, the skewer, right? The motive of the skewer. Mm -hmm. Rook h7 check. Yeah. It's a very common uh, motive in uh, in over the board chess. Mm -hmm. And and um, uh, no, okay. First we see the the other as well. So a7 rook takes a7 loses by my skewer. Mm -hmm. Skewer. Yeah. And and if instead of uh, uh, rook takes a7 he plays king d7. Mm -hmm. Then comes another motive for over the board uh, that is seen sometimes in over the board games, mm -hmm. which is uh, how to win it. The, a black wants to play king c7, king b7. But then we play this tactical move, rook h8, mm -hmm. threatening promotion. Yeah. So yeah, he wins the rook either by uh, by losing it on a8 or losing it by a7 again. Mm -hmm. So there are two skewers here. With, uh, that's uh, for practical players. It's a well-known combination. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just yeah. to remember. Yeah, it is in in rook and game one of the basic one when he started yes. out. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Yeah. But maybe for some of our viewers, maybe it's new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may be new, definitely. Yes. And now if we can get into the next uh, books of yours, because in a moment we'll be talking about next position. But before that, if you can get us a little bit of insight into the book that you wrote and published by Gambit Publications. The book title is Extreme Chess Tactics. If we can get a little bit of insight. Extreme Chess Tactics. Yes. Extreme Chess Tactics is a, a book. Yeah, each of my books, by the way, was written by a different uh, publisher. It was uh, published by, uh, it was written by the same uh, author, but published by a different publisher. Mm -hmm. so this one, uh, this, uh, by the way, this uh, publishing house uh, was, was very active before, and uh, it's run by grandmasters, Murray Chandler and John Nunn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, yes. So, and by uh, the way, John Nunn is known at the chess compositions and chess solvers world as well, right? Especially was, chess solver. He, he was, yeah, especially solver. He was mm -hmm. three times uh, world champion. Uh, he's a grandmaster also of the of, of solving. And nowadays he is a fresh world champion of seniors 65 plus in playing. Last year he won the the world championship of senior players, uh, the older category, mm -hmm. and and he is going to defend this title this to try to defend this title this year. Okay. Uh, and uh, I am a colleague of John Ann because we both write uh, columns in the leading composition uh, publication in the world, which is called the Problemist in England. Mm -hmm. I have the studies column. And he has the, he has the selected studies column, so I, every month I get from him a letter, which are his candidate for next columns that we will not have doubles there. We will not clash in our columns. Got it. Yes, and uh, about this book, mm -hmm. the Extreme Chess Tactics, which was typeset by the wife of John Nunn, Petra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, this book. Uh, shows how to uh, study the tactical elements of chess by both from both sources mm -hmm. the games of world champions men and women and by friendly and solve, uh, solver friendly and player friendly end game studies so in every chapter a motive is the main theme with examples, beautiful examples from world champion practice, uh, over the board world champion practice, and study composers. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, this book also was uh, kind of well received. 
it was published in six uh, languages already. Yeah. And the last two languages are Russian by the Russian Chess Federation mm -hmm. and Turkish. Oh. And in the Turkish edition, I can only understand one word, mm -hmm. which is Shatranj, which is chess in Turkish. In okay. the Turkish language. You know, also Turkey is, uh, become, has become a kind of a very good chess country. They have many grandmasters now, and uh, many, many millions of children are studying chess there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, th mainly thanks to a man who was the chairman of the federation. His name is Yat Yat Yatrizi, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, he made the big. And you, what maybe maybe not so many people know, yeah, that Ataturk, Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish uh, uh, modern the modern Turkey, was a great chess enthusiast. Oh. And I have just seen a photo where he teaches children to play chess. Wow. Ataturk the Great. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can get into the position because I just uh, see the chat and the chat is talking about one of the idea. I just, of course, uh, mentioned it for you is absolutely obvious that the king versus two knights, it's a draw. And therefore, if white loses the pawn, the position is automatically drawn, right? And please continue if you wish. And the reason it's draw is because two knights cannot mate a, a long king. The most they can do is stalemate. Yes, and by by the way, by the first sequence, right? Because if the defending side is playing badly, two knights can checkmate the king, right? A helpmate. Maybe. Yes, a helpmate. Yes, yes, that's what you mean. Uh huh. Yeah, excellent. Uh huh. That is true. Yeah, but uh, if black had one pawn then there are many positions which two knights and the king they mate a king and a pawn and this is so-called Troitsky line right probably this is the one well, yeah because uh, um, uh, the famous uh, Alexei Troitsky he had plenty of time to compose endgame studies mm -hmm. and to investigate this endgame of uh, two knights against why because he was a guard of forests mm -hmm. profession and he was sitting he had nothing to do simply the whole day he was sitting uh, guarding the forest wow and and composing endgame studies so he this way he became the father of the modern endgame study mm -hmm. uh, Troitsky yeah he lived in the city of Leningrad which is now St. Petersburg yeah and and in the war, in the Second World War, there was a siege on Leningrad. There were two famous endgame study composers living there in Leningrad. One was Troitsky and the other was Leonid Kubel. Mm -hmm. They both died in 1942 because of the hunger in Leningrad uh, under the siege of the German. And, and we are now with this position and this position with a pawn that is uh, has looks like hopeless we should still win this position with a very important tactical motive which this study shows do you want me to show or you want this guy who answered to we can we can show it we can show it no okay. problem mm -hmm. okay so the only way to win this ending is to sacrifice both knights in order to survive, to let this last pawn survive. Mm -hmm. The first one, the first move is knight c6. Mm -hmm. And the only one, by the way, right? Because other moves just lose the pawn immediately, right? Yes, yes. It is very nice because the second move is knight b6. Mm -hmm. And when he takes the b6 knight, there is enough time to come with the king and win the pawn ending. Amazing, amazing. Now I, I want just to show this pawn ending to the end because there is something important. He, he plays king c7. Mm -hmm. 
if you play king e7, it comes back. Yes, yeah, so it may be a draw due just, to repetition. Mm -hmm. It's just a waste of time. Because, yeah. Uh, so, uh, instead, okay, let's say he played it, and now he comes back and he comes. He comes. Uh, how was it? Uh, he, he, uh, if, if, if D5 check. D5 check. Pawn forward after yes. king, king c6. D5 check and king e7 then. The pawn check and king e7 after that. No, but this is not the solution. Just Okay, maybe the other one. Uh, oh, black to play. Black to play. Mm -hmm. Black to play. King yes. c7 and now d5. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and now d5. Yeah. And now it goes to d, d8. And, and uh, for maybe for some of my viewers, they must be very careful here. Because if they play d6, they just spoil the whole combination of sacrificing two knights. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this will be a draw after all. The best they can have is stalemate. Or losing the pawn. Yeah. So the only move that wins here at the end, uh, was it? After king d8, white should play king d6. Mm -hmm. And after king d6, uh, it doesn't matter who is on move. Yeah. White wins anyway. And it's very easy because if, for example, king e8 and king c7, and there is no way to stop the pawn from promoting. Yes, and this is a position that is pretty easy winning, and our audience know how to win it. And uh, if I can ask the question, because one of our friends in community uh, asked me if you uh, can recognize the person from the chess composition world. Are you ready? I give you the name of the chess uh, person, of the person from the chess community from the composition world, and you will tell us who is he. Is that, is that okay? Yes. Who is the person that is called, uh, that is the first name and the family name? Siegfried Hornecker. Yeah, Siegfried Hornecker is a German composer, uh, endgame study composer. I also met him in uh, Congress of Belgrade in 2015, and uh, he's um, uh, also the the editor of a chess column in uh, in the most popular website chessbase.com. Definitely, he has, he has the study of the month uh, uh, column there or uh, article there. He, yeah. I, I even know how old he is. He's, I think he's celebrating his 37th uh, birthday uh, these days or uh, recently. Mm -hmm. And he's, uh, yeah, he's a good composer and uh, he's a great enthusiast of the Endgame study. Okay, thank you very much. And just, just one addition. Uh, as, I, as far as I know, the uh, person that you just described holds the title of International Judge for FIDE for Endgame Studies, right? So I'm like a little bit... Uh, additional information. So he is my colleague in that respect as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably b because I am just having the conversation in the chat that uh, if you have any studies that was published in any chess periodicals or the magazine, you know this study already, right? Because you have 50 years devoted to this word and I'm just making a little bit of joke, of course, because you may not seen all of this study, but probably the yes. most important ones you have analyzed back and forth and at the same time, if uh, there is that uh, person in the chess community, in the chess composition world, probably you are a friend of his or her as well, right? <laughs> I, I know most of them personally. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's what I wanted I, I to. I want to add. The reason is the main reason is that I am the still, although I've been living somewhere else, I am still the official delegate of Israel in the Congress of Chess Composition every year. So I meet so many of the of those colleagues there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I Excellent. Want, yeah. I want to say something about this because we haven't mentioned the motive uh, of the winning uh, uh, maneuver here. Okay. Okay. We sacrificed. We sacrifice both knights to gain a tempo by moving, by, uh, how do you say, uh, luring the black king to a further square 
and let the white king having a tempo, two tempis. Mm -hmm. this, these two moves, knight c6 and knight b6, are called sacrificial deflections. Oh. They, they are deflections by, by sacrificing. Mm -hmm. They lure the king away of the pawn in order to, to allow the king to come right in time mm -hmm. to, uh, allow, to um, help the pawn promoting. Okay, excellent. And now we can nice yes, and now we can get into the next study because we are not having that much time. I do not want to rush, but we are a little bit behind in time. Okay? No, no, j j yes, but just mention uh -huh. because we give the author credit. Yeah. It was composed by the the Dutch composer Wouter Mays. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, now uh, to the next one. Mm -hmm which is another Gorgiev. We have another Tigran Gorgiev study. Mm -hmm. and look, the, look, that is really uh, uh, curious. Because yeah, the starting position is amazing because it looks like the kids will be playing with the pieces, right? I mean, yes. the kids. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And also aristocrat, no pawns, and the same material. Both have the same material. Mm -hmm. And white wins here. Looks like like a wonder. White wins. Uh, white cannot take the, the rook on f6 because he loses the rook on a3. So it means the bishop is uh, paradoxically pinned uh, if we want to win. Of course, if we ch exchange rooks, it's a draw. Mm -hmm. so the, move is, the first move is quite obvious. Rook b3 check. Mm -hmm. If the king goes away, then bishop takes rook, wins, mm -hmm. as we saw already. Yeah, very similar motive, by the way, right? Yes, mm -hmm. similar motives. But black has a, a, a witty defense. He plays rook b6, sacrificing the rook with check. Because when he takes, he can attack the, he can attack the rook. Uh, not to a7, by the way, uh, I mean, in this position, after he takes, not black, uh, uh, not king to a7, because bishop d8 uh, protects the, the rook, or uh, rook to e6 or something, yes? Mm -hmm. So the king has to come to the center to avoid. Now, if he plays rook e6, then come king d7. It's a fork. Yeah. And draws because rook against bishop is an uh, absolutely draw. Mm -hmm. uh, with some... Uh, okay. With exceptions, yes, there are some exceptions that is lost. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, uh, so uh, what to do? The beautiful thing is that white has a counter sacrifice now. Amazing. Very beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. super. I, I love, by the way, I love the moves that with the X-ray and with the X-ray defense. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, because uh, there is a counter uh, echo uh, motive. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and also these are neat sacrifices. You don't take anything; you just uh, sacrifice a neat uh, piece. Yeah. Neat. Mm -hmm. So he has to take on d8. Yeah. But now we have rook against bishop. But now comes the idea: White takes advantage of the. Uh, uh, position for uh, one of the exceptions we were mentioning. Mm -hmm, yes. mm -hmm. So here, a skewer. Yeah. So only move is king e7. Yeah. And the highlight of this uh, position is that we can play king g6, and this is again a zugzwang. Mm -hmm. It's black to play. And he has no moves. He loses the bishop after any move. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's a small game. It's it's also composed by Gorgiev, Tigran Gorgiev, in 1930. This is impressive, very impressive. And yeah. by the way, if we can get a, a little bit of, uh, let's say, insight, why uh, we need to play King G6, right? Just a little bit of 
description if you can give us the insight. Yes, yes. okay, so I take it back. Mm -hmm. Here the, the, the bishop cannot move, but the king can move to f7. So the, uh, if we come to g8 to stop this king f7, then we allow a flight for the bishop on h6. But the, the move that avoid prevents both uh, options is king g6 dominating this is the motive domination mm -hmm. black is in domination uh, it's not a, 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 a mutual zugzwang because if it's white to play you can play rook a8 or or rook c8 and it's still a zugzwang but this is a, a domination position uh, the, the black uh, bishop is dominated and lost just a very nice uh, example. Mm -hmm. And can we can we tell the domination is some like the uh, let's say invisible part of restriction because it is some like two pieces of one part, right? Domination and restriction. Do you agree on that? Uh, yeah. It's... Because if one side dominates the other, the other must be restricted. Does it make sense? The other is dominated. Sorry. The the other part, side is dominated. Okay. If you, if you refer to domination, but you can say that he has a restricted uh, territory on the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially with the bishop, right? Because the bishop is restricted if in movement, and both squares that bishop can go make the legal moves are controlled by white pieces by, by the king, right? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and the rook uh, of course covers uh, other moves by the king uh, because he attacks the bishop. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, if you can tell us, uh, tell a little bit about this uh, study, where it was published, because we know already it was published by Gorgiev, but where it was published it, the, uh, originally? Yeah, I think uh, you are right, because I missed to write the, the source, and I, I cannot... Uh... No, no, the source is written, 64, it was in the chess magazine. Then it's 64. Yeah, 64 magazine, therefore it's perfectly fine. 64 uh, was a weekly uh, magazine mm -hmm. that became a monthly now. Uh, his uh, first uh, uh, editor, I knew him, was uh, Mr. Rochal. Yeah. Uh, what was his first name? Uh, started to forget names, but uh, uh, Rochal, for many years, he was the editor, and I met him also in Vikings and other places. And uh, um, the editor, the first editor of this magazine, uh, uh, in the Soviet times, it was a, a supplement of the Sovietsky Sport, mm -hmm. sport magazine. I remember Cherniak bringing us to, to see the Sovietsky Sport and 64 yeah. in the, the good old times. But the first editor died last Friday in Beersheba in Israel. Oh. His name... Uh, uh, Oy, oy, oy. He wrote many chess books, many famous chess books that were translated to uh, to uh, English also in Kadogan, in uh, a Russian guy, uh, Yaakov. Uh, Yaakov is his first name, and uh, Yaakov Neistat. Neistat. Oh yeah. my goodness! This is the history person. Yes. Yaakov Neistat. History. He he died 23rd of March. Oh, I didn't know that. Half a, half a year before he became 100. Yeah, that's why I know because he's a, l l l he was actually a living legend, right? With all of the living publications. Uh -huh. He was also a senior international master in correspondence chess. And, the, and he wrote many, many books, history and combinations. Mm -hmm. Especially combinations, because I have some books related to combinations by Yakov Neistat. Uh -huh. Translated to English. Yeah. yeah. Kadog, Kadogan, Pergamon, Ewing Chess. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I met him one time in Israel, but uh, he was in 30 years in Beersheba. Yeah. The last 30 years of his life. I can tell you because I wrote about him in my column because he passed away. Mm -hmm. He was a soldier in the Russian army, yeah. participated in Second World War. On, in the battle on Ukraine, not this uh, battle, but the battle uh, in, uh, against the Germans and uh, in Moldova. 
and he won uh, decorations and he was wounded twice in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and after that he played tournaments with all the big guys, Botvinnik and others, and uh, he became master sport USSR. And uh, then he was editor both first in Shachmat TV SSR and then in 64. Mm -hmm. for, for five years there, five years there, and really a very, uh, uh, I mean, a very active person. Mm -hmm. That was Neistat. I okay. recommend his books. Yeah. Many, many good players grew up on those books. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's correct. And if I can get into the next position in a moment, but before that, we have another question from the chat. Our friend uh, that is having pretty familiar name, uh, the, the nickname that he uses, he, he has the name von Waldhofen. And the question is, if you know the composer of Walter von Waldhofen, if you know, if you heard about him, Walter, Walter von Waldhofen, the German composer. Have you heard about such person? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you, you pronounce it correctly. Walter von Waldhofen. 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 Yes, Waldhofen. I I don't think I heard about him. Okay, maybe it's sometimes maybe uh, not not that easy to recognize. It's okay. Uh, by the way, not German, by Austrian, Austrian. Ah, Austrian. Austrian, no, not I, German. I I admit I there are names I haven't heard also. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what, another question, if I can ask before we get into the next position, what are the criteria criteria that judges score the composition? The criteria, if you can give a little bit of insight. You mean in in a judgment? In yes, a, in a, in a competition, in a tournament, in any kind of uh, let's say a competition that we have the composition and what are the criteria that this studies is scored higher than the other one? Yes, it, mm -hmm. the the main one is originality, that it is a new idea or a, a, a new elements, really new elements. The the. Uh, what is very important is the general impression that the study is doing, making mm -hmm. on, the, on, on the viewer, yes, and, yeah. the, and uh, uh, the complexity of the ideas and uh, the purity of how the main idea is uh, shown, mm -hmm. the economy of, this, of the construction of the pieces on the board, yeah. And, and even additional uh, additional contents are sometimes important. Sometimes thematic, like a logical try uh, that enriches the main idea also. And uh, but at the end of the day is the general impression. Mm -hmm. And of course, he can compare. It's not easy. To, it's hard work to compare with others, other studies who have completely different ideas. It's okay. difficult to compare. But these are the main uh, aspects. Uh, the main criteria for the uh, ju 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 judging the positions, right? That, that, that I can say after 50 years as a judge of study comp uh, competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And if you can get into the next position. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the next position. Uh, not a very, not a very likely one in a normal game. Yes, but yeah. uh, still, uh, it could be, of course. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's actually uh, very short. The solution is very short. Mm -hmm. It's uh, why to play and win. And uh, black has a, a knight. Uh, more, but this knight is attacked and he protects the rook. It's a tricky position because how to how to win with white? Mm -hmm. Black wants to take the rook. And if you take if you take the the, the black rook, you can draw, but you cannot win. So it's it's a short but very sharp. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice the pawn. This pawn, many people think this pawn is winning, but it's sacrificed already on move one. He has to take it. Because white threatens to take the knight. 
and to take the rook, so he must take it. Mm -hmm. And then after he take it, it's still the question how to win it. He took it, he sacrificed it, it was a deflection to uh, allow a check here. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing the rook. Yeah, more material. Yeah. And now it's a mutual Zugzwang. Absolutely amazing. By the way, I know this position, by the way, but yeah. even though I see this position many times, I am hypnotized by this beauty. Yes. Mm -hmm. The mutual Zugzwang, the, the one who plays, loses. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, it's classic. And this, this, is, uh, th this one was composed by a composer called Kleatskin. Russian composer. It was published in Shahmati in 1924. Okay. Next one. Mm -hmm. There but is next. Yes, you can click next. But before that, I'll just give you a little bit, let's say, insight into one more book because you, uh, let's say, uh, recently published the book that probably must be mentioned. Otherwise, I will be pretty much guilty. The Anthology of Miniature Endgame Studies because we are showing the studies from the endgames, right? You collected this, you just edited, you just sorted it out. If you can give us a little bit of insight about your last publication, the title is Anthology of Miniature Endgame Studies. And by the way, for all of the books, I provided the links for the, uh, let's say, uh, sample of PDF files that the audience can look uh, what is the book all about, okay? But not the illegal PDF. No, no, no. I mean the sample that, I know, I know, I know. that is only available at the publisher or any other vendors. We have, these are some like a few uh, pages, let's say 10 pages, 15 pages, not the entire book. I think it's called excerpts or something. Yes, like excerpts or sample. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, uh, this book I uh, was offered by, again, a new uh, publisher, by the chess informant mm -hmm. in Belgrade. Belgrad. I was offered to write an encyclopedia about endgame studies. And I thought encyclopedia for chess composition already exists by informant. Mm -hmm. It is for problems, but there are many, many terms about endgame studies inside. So. No need, I told them, that it exists and uh, it's not much to add. W what I think I would like to do, because I like very much chess uh, miniature studies, mm -hmm. I composed uh, like 150 of them myself, the, uh, then I would like to make uh, something that does not exist yet, which is anthology of, uh, there are books with end, many endgame studies, but uh, anthology uh, of endgame studies categorized to 32, like number of half pieces, uh, of uh, the pieces, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 32 chapters, uh, uh, thematic chapters. And uh, this anthology includes 2000 studies. 2000 studies, uh, uh, modern studies mm -hmm. by all great composers and uh, from about 150, last 150 years. Uh, there are uh, chapters like all the, the motives that we have just uh, mentioned. And also one last chapter studies miniatures composed by over the board grandmasters. Mm -hmm. And you can find there also Botvinnik and Smyslov and uh, and Keres and uh, uh, John Nunn, of course, and Jan Timan. Jan Timan, my teammate for many years in the Netherlands, wrote the foreword also. Very mm -hmm. interesting foreword he wrote. And uh, uh, this uh, solving these uh, studies or looking through these studies can do m uh, many things that I already mentioned about the, the, the special qualities of, of uh, solving for the over the board player. Uh, just that you, if you are a chess teacher also, then you can have endless number of uh, exercises on any topic uh, almost. Yeah. So many, many topics. Great educational value. Mm -hmm. Yes.
exactly and uh, uh, very nicely lay nice layout it looks also very nice uh, because this is the specialty of uh, chess informant mm -hmm. and uh, i uh, every day i get very nice photos on facebook of people who just got the book and make a photo with the book for me yeah the, the day that the book was out uh, in belgrade where it was published all the great uh, study composers, uh, the, the, the Serbians, they met, bought the book, and sent me a, a how do you say, a group photo with them holding the book, uh, just to congratulate me for the day of uh, publish uh, of the publication. Mm -hmm. so, so uh, this this uh, book is uh, I can I'm not objective but I can recommend it to every chess player every chess lover yeah because what I didn't mention that endgame studies and especially miniature because of their economy they not only they improve your chess but they also um, uh, how to say um, uh, improve your chess passion patience P the passion of uh, oh passion passion mm -hmm. yes passion. the chess love mm -hmm. chess love I mean uh, you combine the instructive with the enjoyable yeah together. yeah when, when you uh, study by solving endgame study because you do also something active mm -hmm. and something you solve yourself most probably most likely you will not forget it just printed in as uh, uh, the patterns that I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. we I've just seen it, uh, you will say, when you come to some similar position in in your in one of your games, yes? And, uh, but the, the pleasure of, uh, of the, the, the ideas of endgame studies give is not less important. It keeps your uh, flame alive. Yes? Yeah, and especially if we are just doing something that we enjoy, we can do it forever, right? It's not like we are not bored by that. We are just fascinated, we are intrigued, and we are discovering some of their stuff. And if we can get into the position, let's get uh, into the, let's say, solution, okay? Like the, like this, yeah, the, like the saying of uh, one uh, chess player that uh, chess life time is not enough for chess yeah but it's, it's not the fault of chess it's fault of the life of yeah lifetime. yeah the, the great quote and pretty pretty much famous one if you are just talking about the wife's excuses right why just you are taking that much time to chess this is the fault of chess not the life <laughs> <laughs> the other way around yes. yeah <laughs> so ah, so now we are with uh, this uh, study uh, I mentioned the composer now because he was also earlier and I missed his name. Is a Czech. He's not. It's not the the engine who composed it. It's not Fritz the engine that composed it. Is a grandmaster of chess composition called Zindrich Fritz. Zindrich Fritz, not the engine guys. Remember. Not, not the engine guys. <laughs> not the engine. <laughs> yeah, and and he was a. He, uh, although his name is German, he was a uh, Czech. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, one of the famous uh, Czech composer. Another famous Czech composer, uh, also grandmaster at the same generation, was uh, uh, the, the brother of Ludek Pachman. Mm -hmm. His brother was a grandmaster of chess composition. He was uh, over the board, and his brother Vladimir was a grandmaster of chess composition. Composed many very good studies and very good uh, problems. And Ludek Pachman himself also composed some studies. At least one of them is in this book uh, of the anto in the anthology. Excellent. So, so uh, this study from 1965 Česko Slovensky Schach uh, is the source uh, want us to find a draw for white in a almost hopeless position almost so we have to force uh, the matters here because black is just uh, threatening to come with the king and to kill you so you have to be creative and of course this is a clear move King a6. Once, once you take on a7, it's a draw because uh, even 
if you manage to protect it, the king is so far that I will make a kind of barrier and take the pawn on b6. And I can also put a pawn on b5 with white and bishop on c6. So you have to protect the... The only move is to protect the pawn like this. King. Now. There is uh, what to do. Because uh, he just uh, protects the pawn and uh, threatens to to uh, approach with the king and uh, win easily. Mm -hmm. And it looks like bishop b7 is a big mistake. Because he just take on b7 and play a5. Yeah, and, and the pawn runs to the promotion. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. the, pawn, the black pawn runs to a promotion. Yeah. Astonishingly, bishop b7 is the move. That's a big surprise. Mm -hmm. And why is that? So he has to take, otherwise he loses a7. Mm -hmm. Because now he plays b5. Jesus, this is beauty. Whenever I can see that, it's a beauty. Oh my goodness, it's a beauty. He plays b5, and uh, and uh, the thing is that now he's threatening to take. So uh, because after a5 there is un passant, mm -hmm. and white wins. Yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, when he takes, he wins. If he takes, yes, mm -hmm. so white will win. And if he goes to along the seventh rank. It is stalemate. Yeah, no matter when the rook goes on the seventh rack, it's a stalemate. Mm -hmm. and so he plays rook b8. Yeah. But then he loses one pawn. Mm -hmm. Because he's threatening the rook, he loses also the other pawn. Mm -hmm. Just in time, he makes a draw. Yeah. All of the tempos are perfectly time timing out, right? Yes, but I think also... Uh, Ah, if black to play, he wins. Yes, of course. So yeah, but why to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why to play here? Then mm -hmm. b7. And then, and then promotion. We, then we can uh, then promote. Uh, the threat of promotion, yes, of course. After mm -hmm. this, uh, just play yeah. king and eight, and it's a draw. Mm -hmm. I wanted that is to come to stalemate, but I cannot make it. Yeah, two moves in a row. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. This one. Fritz made many brilliant things like this. And not the engine, not the engine. Not the, not the engine, <laughs> but the engine can solve it. Yeah, and by the way, if you can give a little bit of insight into this engine, because uh, the recent years, I mean the last 15 years, let's say, there was the attempt of the engines that cooked the studies. If you can give us a little bit of insight how it happened in a general sense, right? Because there was the studies from the previous, let's say, decades that some engines just provided the... Uh, that the, the study was not correct, but nobody could find it. You know what I mean? The refutation. That is true. Mm -hmm. Because the human human brain is in some way limited. Also, the time of a human being is limited because he has to make living and to, as a family, he cannot sit all day and uh, look for uh, cooks in studies. Yes. So, uh, but since the since the engines are in. Thousands of studies are cooked. Mm -hmm. Even in the database of 94, uh, the database of Harold van der Heiden, many studies are cooked, but he leaves the studies there because it's part of documentation of studies. They are marked as cooked, and sometimes there are attempts, successful attempts, to correct them and even improve on them. So uh, uh, improve on the cooked ones, or, or uh, even improved on the correct ones. So uh, uh, that is true that thousand, I myself, while I'm working on uh, articles or on the book, I found uh, even this book, miniat uh, the miniatures, I found many um, uh, cooks by the computer and I made a list for Harold van der Heiden and he put them in the next edition because it's part of the documentation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, and uh, there are some composers that their specialty is to, to correct this, uh, these cooked uh, studies. Um, 
I am not sure up to this moment that in my book all studies are correct, uh, all 2,000. But uh, I did my best. Uh, I mean, you cannot spend lifetime for this. Yes, but mm -hmm. Of course, but, uh, nobody can check, check everything, right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, the current uh, engines, like uh, I use this uh, most common one, uh, the free one, what's its name in, in the internet, and uh, and uh, others, they are really, they can uh, find still many uh, cooks. What I'm impressed about uh, composers like Kasparian is that they had no engines and they composed correct, even complicated, very complicated, but correct uh, studies. Mm -hmm. The, the number of uh, cooked uh, studies by Kasparian, I even don't know one, but uh, I guess there were a few, but... Uh, yeah, but, but a few out of, let's say, a few hundred is pretty much a very low, le uh, very low percentage, yeah. right? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. It's just exception from the rule, right? Yes, but uh, yeah, there were some good, uh, good uh, anali analysts that could make... Uh, uh, studies uh, which were uh, still correct even without the engines and uh, yeah that's in short uh, of course we can talk about engines a long time mm -hmm. we can get by the way for the next study yes mm -hmm. we will uh, another fritz for you another fritz yeah. <laughs> maybe one of the study by stockfish would be good right <laughs> because everybody uses stockfish nowadays because it's free <laughs> yes. uh -huh. but, but, uh, but this is also a nice one mm -hmm. and uh, by the way the previous one did we mention the yes the, the offer one? the offer yeah. The the, the the this Fritz the previous one yeah. I did I did not mention the motive oh so, the motive sorry mm -hmm. yeah so the, what did you say what I mean the motive that we didn't say the motive yes P please please no, extend but, but, you, but you offered another word what was it no no I mean that that uh, we we didn't say about the motive and the, the previous position and this one I know but you you try to guess what we missed and I didn't catch ah, what you said sorry maybe. I was a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, so king a6, uh, rook e7, bishop takes, and, and after rook b7, we play b5. Mm -hmm. This b5 is a kind of, um, um, it's called in English, it has several names, uh, but it has several names in English, but we use the German term. The, the term, the German term is Zwischenzug. Oh, Zwischenzug is very common uh, among the community, by the way. No, no, this is the official name in composition also. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that even in the practical players know yes. about this term, even if they do not know about endgame studies. That's like, what I mean. Like Zugzwang. Like mm -hmm. Yes, like Zugzwang, yes. another word, ger German word. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, Blitz. <laughs> All, yeah, so... Uh, uh, this is, we don't take immediately the rook, but we make an in-between move. Mm -hmm. Intermediate move, b5, very strong one. So remember the term Zwischenzug because it's a, a common motive. It looks here something like out of the world, but it's a common motive, uh, even if it's simpler than that. Uh, a, a name to remember, a term to remember. And now we go to the other Fritz. Mm -hmm. And this Fritz is another uh, beautiful motive. And we have here another Malutka, another baby study of five pieces. And it's white to play and win. And how to win? This is a big problem because the king cannot chase the pawn. And, and uh, when uh, it... Uh, 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 I mean, if you play king g7, then king, then h5, king g... I mean, you cannot chase the pawn because then uh, uh, there is no win, how to win. And the, the king is uh, uh, slow. Mm -hmm. So then he will have to use the bishop for stopping the promotion and lose the pawn on b2. Yeah. So what to do? Here comes a famous name 
of a player who was a great composer and we haven't yet mentioned. Mm -hmm. The name is Richard Retti. Richard, Richard Retti was a Czech, also a Czech. Uh, there are several nations that claim uh, 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 ownership of uh, Retti, but uh, he was a kind of Czech, Austrian, Jewish guy. So he, uh, he, he composed studies which show maneuver that became famous as Retti maneuver. Mm -hmm. Especially with the pawn and the games, right? The, yes. the two pawns that are king is chasing the pawn. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So what we have to do is to combine plans here. Mm -hmm. While we are chasing this pawn and uh, threaten to trap it, at the same time we are moving towards this wing. We play on king side and queen side at the same time. Mm -hmm. without losing tempis. And so we do it like this. Instead of going directly on the pawn, we are uh, doing it in diagonal. Because it's the same le sa <coughs> same distance. It's not. It's the same distance. King f7, threatening king g6. Mm -hmm. So he has to play h5. King e6, threatening to get into the square and uh, trap this home. He has to play h4. Yeah. King d5, threatening king e4. So he has to play h3. King c4. Amazing idea. Now the king cannot move here, so mm -hmm. he has to play here. Yeah. And we have exactly time for bishop b4, h1 queen and bishop and pawn b3 mate. Yeah, beautiful. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. With no material at all, we are controlling the whole board. Yeah. Queen side and king side. Uh, if you think that this idea uh, belongs only to the end game, you will be surprised because in over the board chess, there is the um, the principle of two weaknesses. Mm -hmm. If we want to win, sometimes the opponent has enough defense to protect one weakness. Yeah. Either a weak square or a weak piece. But if he has to maneuver between two weaknesses, sometimes he lo loses the, con the contact or is not in time to protect both. Mm -hmm. so that's what we are doing here. Black cannot protect his two weaknesses at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this is a great concept to remember. Yeah. And, and this position you will not forget. And by the way, one of our uh, active viewers is just mentioning this is the direction of calculation. Have you heard about such term? Direction of calculation? Uh-huh. I, I would be happy to learn something too. No problem. We can help you to learn about this. The, the path of the king was related to the diagonal, right? Yes. And this diagonal move, you, you, do not, you didn't calculate it any other, let's say, uh, moves with the, with the idea of making the other direction by the king, right? Yeah, because... because yeah, I of course, it was the first one. Yes, of course. But what I mean, I am the creator of the new terms that I am testing with my community. And yesterday I was talking about the same idea and I called it the direction of calculation. Uh -huh. But you, you talked about uh, Reti or... No, no, or it was not Reti. It was just another the, connection. Yes, another, another idea that I want to make the process of calculation more efficient to our, our, our friends. More, yeah, more economical and efficient. Yes, yes. efficient and, and, and um, uh, economical. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very good. Uh, I d yeah, I haven't heard of it because I didn't attend your uh, lesson, I guess. And that's why everybody needs to know that we have the best chess community and right here we have the best chess guests. Yes, I learned something, of course. Excellent. That's, that's the, let's say, idea to uh, learn from both sides. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. We profit from both uh, uh, from the viewers and for, from uh, the lecturers as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, we can get for the next one, if you wish. Yeah, I wish. Mm -hmm. And the next one is again Pogosians. 
these Pogosians that compose so many studies. So here is uh, a short one. It's white to play and win. Mm -hmm. uh, how many knights we have on the board? Three, yes? Just three. We will have four. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and probably I'll just put a little bit of insight because I'm not sure if you are, uh, let's say, uh, aware of that, but uh, probably you know about the player, Hikaru Nakamura. You know him, right? But you probably may not know, I, I'm having this a little bit of, let's say, a, a shadow of the doubt, that you may not know that back then, probably 15 or 20 years ago, he was playing in the ICC, Internet Chess Club, and, and he just and checkmated... He just and never stopped ever since. No, 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 I do not mean that, of course, this is pretty much <laughs> true as well. But what I mean, that he checkmated the program. I'm not sure what was the program. Probably Ripka, the Czech program by yep. Vasik oh, Reilich, yeah. the Ripka program. He checkmated with six or seven knights. You know what I mean? He just underpromoted and oh, checkmated yeah. with the seven or eight knights. <laughs> yeah. But uh, sometimes it's not pleasant for the opponent. Yeah, but the opponent was the silicon one. It wasn't complained. <laughs> yeah, it was a silicon one. Okay. Yeah, silicon one. Don't worry. Yes. By the way, I know him personally because he play he used to play ev almost every year in Vikenze and I used to play to talk to him sometimes. Excellent. So, uh, we we have now uh, to try to win uh, uh, with white. Okay, uh, we have to force matters because uh, in normal uh, situation if the the knight goes away it's a draw. So, mm -hmm. so check. Okay, we have to choose which check, but we we just have some further moves in mind. So another check. If he goes to h1, then we are mating him on g3. So uh, so we have to go cancel this and and. Uh, he goes to f1. And now what to do? It looks like we must stop the pawn from promotion, isn't it? So we have to play this. Mm -hmm. Controlling that promotion square. But this looks like not the right uh, move. I, I I forgot the right move and I cannot see it because I see... Only... Okay, I'll just, I'll just let you know. The first move is knight f2. After that, knight h3. Knight h3. No, that I played. And yes. then king d1 instead of knight g3. Ah, yes, king d1. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Now I remember. Okay. Actually, it's here. I I can see it. Okay, so, okay. So, king d1 with the threat, knight g3 mate. Mm -hmm. So the only way to stop the mate is to promote a knight like Hikaru Nakamura. Yeah. So we have very nice position with four friends here. May I ask if it is the fourth night's opening? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fourth night ending. That's why I asked about it. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> so the the uh, position is actually Zugzwang for Black. Mm -hmm. So if we find a simple move, uh, a waiting move, then white wins. And I think it, this is the only one, yes? Yeah. So king d2. Mm -hmm. uh, black to move. So if he moves with the knight on g2. Yeah. Somewhere, then... Uh, when we are just knight. cutting off g2 and f1 with the knight, right? Yes. Because these two squares need to be taken out. Mm -hmm. Yes. So knight e3 covers also g2. And by the way, beautiful construction of the symmetry, right? Yes, symmetry. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very aesthetic. Position. Yes, aesthetic. Uh huh. Yes, and uh, and uh, if uh, this knight moves, then we have knight g3 mate. And beautiful and symmetry as well. Nice. Yeah, also geometry, beautiful. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nice, nice position. So this is a nice study. Small and nice. Mm hmm. We can go to the other one. I, uh, yeah, the motive I didn't mention yeah. was this motive everybody knows. It's called mate. So 
Mate is also a tactical motive. Mm -hmm. And probably you... one of the easiest to recognize. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, we also have Zugzwang also here, of course, and very nice uh, final positions. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, this position is not an ideal mate because the F two square is covered twice. Yeah, it's not an ideal mate, but uh, it's still a beautiful mate. Uh, okay, so we we have already come to the end of the series, I think. Yes, we are just two positions, if I'm not mistaken, right? Two positions left. Is that ah, correct? Really? So, so I, I thought we... Ah, you are right, yes. Right, because I have on the list that there are two positions more. Because I see only one, but maybe I skipped one. Okay, it may be one as well. It's not a... Oh, yes, the, the, the last one. Because the, yeah. the, the, on, the last one on my list is the first one from your list. Therefore, this the last the, one. Sorry. This mm -hmm. is the last one? Yes, the last one. Uh, coincidentally, also by a Czech composer, very prolific Czech, uh, Czech composer called Ladislav Prokesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you have the name of the magazine, but it was composed in 1940, 1940 in the war mm -hmm. and, and during the war. And uh, Prokesh was a prolific composer, but he was also a chess master. There are quite a lot of chess uh, master and grandmasters uh, that are, uh, were composing studies uh, because, of course, uh, related uh, related to over the board chess. Mm -hmm. Less problem composers, but many study composers. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps Reti was the best of them, perhaps. But uh, Timan is a competitor. Uh, so this uh, study uh, asked for a draw. Yeah. And the problem of white is that his king is uh, quite remote and uh, it's not so easy to come back to the pawns, uh, to join the pawns in time. But uh, okay, we try. We play king f4. So the, the threat is uh, simply to continue, f5, f6. So black uh, joins with the king because he doesn't want to let uh, the white king comes to e5 or then it will be immediately drawn. Mm -hmm. So uh, king f4 and he plays... Uh, yeah, this is what does he play here because it's, uh, it's uh, really a question. King f5, king f7, black wins. Then e7, d7. So now there is a beautiful move. Queen. Surprisingly sacrificing, okay, has no choice. Sacrificing the one of his precious pawns because that allows him to approach his other pawn. But still the king is right in time. King f7, king d6, king e8, king c6, rook c8. Because the threat was king b7, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Rook c8, what does he play? Now black threatening king e7. So the only move is king d6. And surprisingly, the only move for black is king a6, uh, rook a8. Mm -hmm. After which king c6, threatening king b7, forces him to come back here. After king b7, there is king d7. King d6. And surprisingly, it's a positional draw. Mm -hmm. Quite a rare one. Positional draw. There is no uh, black. Uh, why uh, black has? Uh, uh, although it looks looked before so promising, as not more than a draw. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very well uh, constructed with a 
pawn, sacrifice on a8, and uh, yeah, all these positions really help to remember principles in the end game. Because what we haven't mentioned maybe is that solving studies deepening your end game understanding. Also. Yeah, absolutely. Not only your tactics, but also your end game understanding. And this is very instructive. And the motive, which is common to many, many studies, is positional draw. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if I can ask, because we'll be having at some point, because I'll be creating this topic, I promised to one of my friends uh, from chess community, what is the relationship be between the positional draw and the fortresses? How can you describe it? What is the, let's say, difference between that? The... the the positional draw and the fortress. Yes. What are the differences or the mutual parts, maybe? Fortress is a particular case of positional draw. There are all kinds of positional draw. Mm -hmm. Fortress is one of them, one of the sorts. Mm -hmm. Maybe the most paradoxical, because one side has so much uh, a material <laughs> advantage but still he cannot make it uh, uh, to a point. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is also d defined as positional draw. Okay. So far for the 12, uh, the dozen, there was one once a movie, I think, the, the something with the, with the dozen. We had a dozen uh, beautiful uh, studies here. Mm -hmm. uh, and as much as they were beautiful, they were not too complicated to understand. And I think they left something for the viewers to remember mm -hmm. and to learn from for their, even for their over the board chess. I hope uh, that that was also enjoyable. Yeah, it was very nice uh, int introduction into the chess composition world. And the last part, because uh, I'd like to put the, the final touch into the meeting, is the idea about uh, a little bit, uh, let's say, telling us how can uh, one get into this chess community and chess world? Because it's something like <clears throat> invisible. And therefore, if you just tell us a little bit where to start the journey with the composition, uh, are there any competitions and what kind of skills are needed to have the activity on this part of chess? So you are talking about only this part of chess? Yes, about just composition, about yes. just composition. Just composition, nowadays it's much easier to get into it than any time in the history, because uh, if you have a computer and you are, for example, first of all, there are endless number of websites that deals with chess composition, mm -hmm. all kinds, not only problems, but m many of studies and and the uh, composers of studies and problems, any any terms, uh, if you put on Google, Google, you will get something. And, and uh, uh, second, if you go to Facebook, there are uh, several or even many pages of uh, active daily uh, with uh, problems and studies and composers that exchange ideas and they show their studies. I am also doing it from time to time and uh, I'm kind of expert in some pages there also. And uh, uh, composers run, many composers run a page of, of uh, composition. Uh, from their own composition, there are there is a page of miniatures, there is a page of self-made, there is uh, there are many pages. I uh, uh, I am member of some groups there. There is a group uh, of uh, uh, Michael Passman. is an Israeli composer. He has a good page that all every day shows. Uh, Two movers and studies is a good, very good study composer. Mm -hmm. and he shows many studies. Uh, the the story of him is, by the way, quite curious because he started to compose. At, he is international master of over the board, mm -hmm. but started to get into composing studies uh, in his late fifties. Oh, so he is as as. Uh, uh, composed for the last uh, maybe three, four years, 
And already last year, he, he won uh, prizes more than any other composer in the world. Wow. Yes, because he's also very prolific and also ca he gained the, the level. He, uh, I mean, not only in quantity, but also in high quality. Mm -hmm. uh, his studies are of a high standard. And uh, yeah, I was a, a bit of a mentor for him. In the... And can you remind the name of this composer? Michael yeah? Passman, P-A-S-M-A-N. Okay. okay, okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There is another American website where the active person there who shows all the time Endgame Studies is the most prolific book compo uh, author of chess openings and stuff. The American, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cyrus Laquadala. Exactly. Yes, it was our friend that popped up into the interviews a few times and therefore I wanted to ask you in a moment if you remember about Cyrus because he started composing this and putting this into the books as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much for mentioning him. Yes, now he has books about Endgame Studies also. Mm -hmm. About uh, Austrian composer Votava. He puts a yeah, study Votava on Studies. Mm -hmm. Every day he puts a study on on his, this page or also on at facebook, facebook. Mm -hmm. yes yeah. yes and so facebook is more and more uh, full of such uh, material mm -hmm. and there is also a there is also a, a website of the um, uh, the world federation of uh, chess composition mm -hmm. which is very active one and it talks about all the all the events of composing, of solving. Mm -hmm. I think there are also uh, solvers, there are also solvers uh, pages, but I'm not sure. Yeah, probably it may be possible. And the last question, because uh, some of the community members may be... Yeah? Just, just to, to, to okay. end this point, okay. because you can also find uh, composition magazines. Mm -hmm. There are many composition magazines in uh, not so many as chess magazines maybe because it's expensive to produce but uh, but some of them are also online and uh, or digital. Uh, Electronic can, format. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, you can make subscriptions. Uh, uh, the leading one is uh, the problem is the English one but they are in Germany and in many countries in Europe. Uh, so that is another possibility and also if you ask uh, an advice from from composers who have a Facebook or uh, whatever they will also be very kind to to, uh, to support you to support to, to help with a good advice or uh, I get these questions every day I'm busy with helping uh, people understanding something and uh, or uh, they show me their composition. Mm -hmm. They're, they're uh, sometimes premature uh, efforts and stuff. You have to start from something and then uh, you improve. Uh, yeah, so I hope uh, many young ones will join because uh, the, the composition world seems to get to age to get uh, older and older, mm -hmm. uh, the new generation likes uh, to play more, I think. Maybe we can call that we need to make, uh, we need to have more younger dinosaurs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Younger dinosaurs, right? Because if somebody uh, is pretty much long in the same community, it's, it's some like called dinosaur, right? Because it's some like back age. Like me, you mean? Eh, without <laughs> any, without any, uh, let's say, uh, example false example. modesty yes you are the best one <laughs> the best one of the dinosaurs and that's why i wanted uh, others to see how you are look how you look like and how you can show all of the stuff in a, a super interesting way oh thank you very much mm -hmm. I, and one I question about it. about the let's say stuff because as i just mentioned there could be some polish chess members that are just uh, let's say watching our interview i would like you to uh, mention about the Polish te team solvers, if yes. you know them and if you can name them, at least a few. Yes. I, Especially the, the ones that are pretty much famous due to the practical, uh, let's say, play as well. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 several are, are players. And mm -hmm. But uh, first I will mention the best uh, Polish composer. Yeah. The, 
the only grandmaster uh, and the great composer really very much uh, recommend to uh, to look at his compositions a study composer called Jan Rusinek mm -hmm. Jan Rusinek is a grandmaster and he was uh, uh, how do you call it a uh, rector of university mm -hmm. so then he composed little when he became rector but now he's retired and he is back full swing of composition uh, in composition mm -hmm. and uh, uh, highly recommended to look at his stuff you can find them on the uh, internet as well and uh, uh, but P Poland is uh, uh, especially excelling in solving Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and especially in the new millennium yeah now, now they have a big competition from the young generation in russia mm -hmm. but uh, some the russians cannot uh, p uh, compete in uh, turn and turn is now as as yeah due to the situation of russia mm -hmm. uh, but this is temporarily of course and i hope that it will uh, end soon uh, but uh, but uh, uh, the Polish team of composers won many times in the new millennium the world championship for teams mm -hmm. and for individuals because it's the same it's the same competition you have a, a team uh, result and each of the, the individual scores right yes individual mm -hmm. scores the team result uh, uh, every team has three solvers and the team result is uh, 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 by adding the best two uh, results, individual results, in any round. Mm -hmm. There are, there are uh, six rounds of uh, two movers, three movers, more movers, uh, studies, helpmate and selfmate. So uh, the, the best two in each round, uh, this is the team result. Uh, Poland has won I don't know, maybe five times uh, the, the World Championship, but also the World Championship for individuals many times. Mm -hmm. uh, the famous uh, World Champions, uh, famous solvers are uh, Peter Murgia, mm -hmm. uh, my friend, by the way, uh, and he is international master over the board. Yeah. He's also, I think, has a job in the Federation, uh, Chess Federation as a trainer and uh, and uh, of the youth, I think, and uh, uh, the other one is a very uh, one of the best uh, Polish uh, over the board grandmasters, Casper uh, Pioron, I call him. Pioron, Pioron, mm -hmm. Pioron, yes, Casper Pioron. Mm -hmm. Yes, also I know him well from the congresses and the championship. Uh, there used to be another grandmaster. A chess grandmaster called Mishta, but, mm -hmm. uh, Alexander Mishta. Alexander Mishta. Mm -hmm. I met him too, uh, but he's probably, as I said, living somewhere else uh, and uh, has having a job somewhere. So he's instead of him, member of the team is Piotr Gorski, mm -hmm. also a very good uh, solver. And they are. Uh, the, this is the regular trio in the in recent years. Yeah. And there are others also, but they are not as famous as these ones. Mm -hmm. And especially I wanted you to, let's say, name some of the Polish chess solvers, because Kasper Piorun at World, World Cup Championship probably two years ago was go going pretty much into the late stages of the competition. And that's mm -hmm. why it, he was recognized um, over the board play. And at the same time, the commentators mentioned the stuff that you mentioned about the composition. That yes. composition helped him in a practical play as well. He's doing very well in uh, in individual tournament, and uh, you say in the cup, you mean the the qualifying, yes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, matches. Yeah, yes. with the matches. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, no, he's a very good player and uh, uh, and a very nice person, I think. Yeah, yeah. Casper is a very nice as well. And now yes. let's get uh, into the final stage. If we're just wrapping up, how could you? make the summary about today's meeting because this way we'll just make a little bit of solidifying all of the stuff we have just mentioned all of the questions answered and all of the positions that you presented to us how would you sum it up how were you feeling during this interview during this meeting during this discussion i was f feeling uh, during this uh, uh, i don't see my uh, viewers so on one 
on one hand it helps because <laughs> I feel you are my only company. <laughs> <laughs> But they, they, saw, they saw you all of the time. Yeah, yeah, and I saw you. You gave me confidence with your uh, your uh, uh, reactions also, and uh, but uh, I, I got more confidence with the time as the time passes. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy because we had uh, quite a long session, but uh, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing knowledge, and. Uh, Also, I enjoy the game, the studies, although I know them for many years, but they're always enjoyable, the, the studies. I, uh, by, uh, you can see that by only looking at 12 studies, mm -hmm. you have added so much, uh, so many uh, experiences and uh, uh, concepts and uh, new uh, terms uh, in just about three hours than uh, before you came here. So you can imagine with thousands of studies how much uh, chess treasures you can still, they are still there to be discovered for you. Mm -hmm. so it's uh, really a cu curious uh, field uh, and that some of you are newcomers and uh, there is a lot to see. But at the same time, you, I think you also gain some uh, valuable uh, knowledge that might help you in many ways in your uh, over-the-board career, over-the-board practice, because um, it's easy to say, uh, to see, it's easy to see that uh, it helps at least in understanding tactics better, in uh, uh, improving calculating skills, calculation skills, and skills in uh, appreciating, ch appreciating chess beauty in and aesthetics in, uh, uh, in in the pattern recognition in enriching your uh, uh, chess weaponry for uh, um, street fighting defenses and uh, attacks yes and uh, also uh, uh, Yeah, and to play to play accurately, playing accurately because there are many traps, many many uh, tries that uh, are refuted. Uh, also, so there are many aspects. I just mentioned uh, quite uh, just a few of them, and mainly is that the, uh, always this kind of study, chess studying, uh, is uh, instructive and enjoyable at the same time. Yeah, it was a great pleasure and I am just uh, expressing the gratitude for me and from our community because uh, our community is pretty much uh, very, very happy about uh, learning about new, uh, let's say, chess dimension, if I can say that, or chess perspective. We are very grateful for accepting the invitation and sharing the love to chess because at the uh, screen I am sh seeing the chat. The chat is just uh, mentioning that you have, my friend, great passion about chess, great pedagogical, pedagogical skills, and at the same time, it is pretty much visible that you are enjoying chess immensely. And therefore, we are so grateful that you accepted the invitation and wanted to introduce us into this beautiful chess world. We are super grateful. Thank you very much also for attending it and being so patient for so long time. And uh, I only can wish you uh, lots of pleasure from a new hobby and the new aspect of chess. Uh, and uh, who knows, maybe we see at least some of you uh, in the future as competitors in uh, composing tourneys, in solving tourneys, uh, or just uh, in Facebook or somewhere as, as uh, friends uh, enjoying uh, composition. Yeah, I, I believe that it's may, it, is may, it is possible, especially after such a great introduction, because you presented all of the ideas, all of the concepts, all of the moves, all of the benefits, all of the intricacies and the secrets that was not available for our community in such a way that I strongly believe that many, many uh, new viewers and the people who are enjoying the secret part of chess, if I can call it, will just get into this uh, deeper at least to check out if this is the part for them to get more attention. This is the key. I, I, I will be the first to be 
proud if I will see some of them coming to me and say, we started here. <laughs> yes, we started at Thinker Teachers and you'll be some like, who is Thinker Teacher? It is Tom, it's me. Therefore, if somebody is mentioning Thinker Teacher, you know it was this meeting, okay? Okay, that will be a great compliment. Okay, thank you very much, my friend. I really, really appreciate it. In on behalf of our community, I'm very grateful for providing this expertise, knowledge, and the experience related to the position, to the, uh, let's say, explanation, and all of the stuff that you gave us. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much. And uh, you may enjoy my books too, if you want to. Yes, I presented all of them. I presented the links to the excerpts, so just the samples for people who'd like to buy them and who just enjoy them. Therefore, everything we have done, what was planned. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, good luck with your further uh, activities in the group. Thank you very much, my friend. Good luck to you as good well. Best. Have a great time. Take care and bye-bye. Good evening and bye-bye. Good evening. Bye-bye. What was that? Can you see the title? Sorry, not this one. Can you see the title? 100 minutes with Yohanan Afek. 100. Thinker teacher. Having three hours conversation is not 100. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a blunder. What a blunder by thinker teacher. I apologize, guys. It was my fault, but I couldn't stop it. Sorry, I couldn't. Even though I speed it up, my, our friend King Shield, our friend Chris, asking uh, about uh, extension of the meeting. And I told him in the halfway that I extended for 40 minutes because I knew it's going to be at least three hours, at least. But take notice, guys, that it was just the introduction into this word. And by the way, I'm not sure if you know, but my guest, and uh, when I was negotiated with our guest, Yohanan, I asked him about uh, giving us 90 minutes. You know what I mean? 90 minutes. Therefore, I extended for 10 minutes due to the questions, due to the technical part. And it looked like it was three hours, three hours and 20 minutes from the start of the stream. But from the meeting, uh, because we just met after five minutes, uh, the stream started. It's three hours, 15 minutes. Therefore, close to... 200 minutes. I just doubled the meeting. It was my, it is my fault. I took everything on my, on, my, on myself. <laughs> yes. And by the way, the, the meeting was that quickly passing by that I was not aware how much of the ideas, how much of the presentation, how much of the questions, books, uh, description and so on, we have just packed into this meeting. I'm not kidding. It was really, really impressive. And I am pretty happy that uh, our guest just allow us to extend it. I hope he will don't he don't mind that he doesn't mind that we just did it a little bit too much. But at least I, I hope he enjoyed that. And it was one of the best blunders I have ever done. What about that? Which was your favorite uh, composition thinker teacher? By the way, uh, there are a lot of composi compositions and uh, some of them I know. But the most impressive to me was the last one with two pawns versus rock. The last one with two pawns versus rock. Because it is something like the Zugzwang, the restriction, and the sides needs to repeat the position forever. And therefore the last one was making the most impression on me. Each one and every of these were beauty, but the last one had the most impression on me. Mike says, anything our teacher guests should know that the estimated time will be at least double. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> it's very correct, guys. That's the first point. Uh, I'll just have a look at chat. And Johanan is so passionate. That's why I told you that it's, it's going to be a fire. I knew it. I knew it. Because our friend is so passionate about chess that it's not that easy to match him, his passion. And he, he talked about everything. What I planned, I tried to pack into the, let's say, bigger part. I apologize that I couldn't give our guest the puzzles that you shared into the uh, board. But it is not because I am mean, but it was because of the technical stuff. Therefore, I couldn't extend it too much. And our guest needed to have it in the electronic format. I needed to send it to him. And this is the another, let's say, 30 minutes at least. Therefore, I apologize for that because... Not everything can be done, but I really appreciate your presence and your activity and participation in this meeting. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I'll just look at the chat. 
uh, have a good one at your offer 100 minutes yes it was it was 100 minutes i mean you got 200 minutes of the price of 100 yes definitely we doubled the meeting at the price of the basic one we just doubled don't sweat it i think i will like the extra interview i hope so i hope so because i was pretty much scared not because of uh let's say um, the quality of the presentation because there was one technical problem at the beginning when we just tried to uh, make the screen into the uh, into the, uh, the, the sh screen sharing into the stream because our our friend Johanan Afeng has worked without the computer for 50 years I'm not kidding for 50 years he didn't have the computer access and that's why you need to forgive him that sometimes he may have a little bit of trouble with the uh, new technology Imagine not having 50 years the uh, opportunity to touch the computer and work with the computer. Therefore, he, 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 he did it great. Ram, please, it was the perfect blunder. I hope so. I hope so. At least if you enjoyed it, I am pretty happy. And by the way, this part will be on the YouTube after some, some time when I process that. This, this is going to be on the YouTube. Therefore, if somebody missed some of the parts or the, the whole part, this is going to be on the YouTube, okay? Uh, Mike, my finger teacher guest. Okay, I, I read that. Prophylaxis. I remember Alec Affect from the Chessmaster CD played weight skin. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, to be honest. Laffle Waffle. I like the two knight and pawn. Yes, the two knight and the pawn was pretty uh, amazing as well. Yes, I completely forgot about it. Yes, it was shocking as well. Yes, beautiful one. By the way, I knew that uh, the one with the rook versus two pawns, but I didn't know the two knights versus the pawn. I didn't know that, by the way. But anyway, all of these studies were pretty much instructional. At the same time, beauty, if you can, uh, let's say, appreciate the value and the depth. Because to me, such, let's say, uh, parts of chess is mostly for enjoying and for uh, the, the light, being delighted with some of the invisible stuff. And therefore, it's it's uh, from my stand 